Um, so Street Fighter Alpha would be the next game in the series. Should we do a pause first? I did a pause. <laughs> not if you I did a pause. If you look at it, I did. did it. I did a pause. Yeah, it's this not is my pause. <laughs> this is my pause. <laughs> Today's episode, we'll be covering the Street Fighter series. I'm joined with the consistently reliable James Miller and the refreshingly new Andy Wosu. That's right. Peter's not here. He's dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Peter's on vacation, uh, as a lot of you probably know, because last week's episode, uh, we were on hiatus. Uh, this week's episode, Namdi so graciously came out to help us out and fill in for Peter until he's back next week. But next week, Namdi will be dead to us, and we'll be back with Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, Namdi, how's it going? Why don't you introduce yourself? It's going, uh, you know, I'm Namdi. Um, I know these guys do work, obviously. Um, I guess, listening, I've been listening to the podcast since the first episode. Uh, big fan of what they do. Big fan of a lot of the games they talk about. But, of course, one of my favorite series is Street Fighter. So, uh, I guess I'm here to, to fact check. I'm a fact checking squad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's here to finally call us out on our bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the first expert we've had. Yeah, here. exactly. Yeah. God, God knows we're not. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I expect to get a lot of things wrong. And I mean, I'm looking forward to you correcting me. I have a little quiz for you. Uh, sure. It's, it's going to happen in, in the middle of the <laughs> yeah. uh, What's your favorite Street Fighter game? Ooh, uh, I'm gonna make a tie. I'm gonna cop a two and four. Two and four. Yeah, two and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good picks. Good picks. Yeah. Um, I would say two just because. Um, I mean, two is like the quintessential, exactly. right? <laughs> I don't know how people rate games. For me, no games a ten unless it sets the genre. Yeah, yeah. Of the game, right? Yeah, so that's like fair. for me, like Uncharted Two is a ten because it changed the way like cinematic yeah. things can be told. You know, GTA Three is a ten. Uh, Mario Sixty Four is a ten. Yeah. Like Trendsetters. So Street Fighter Two for me, that's would, a ten. Would be that ten? Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so Street Fighter 2, there's been how many iterations of it? Probably close uh, to 15 or 16 <laughs> yeah. different releases most of this game. Recently, the recently, the most recent version of Street Fighter 2 came out in March. Oh, yeah? There on, you go. Uh, on the yeah. Switch called Ultra Street Fighter 2. Yeah. Wow. And Street yeah. Fighter 5 was last year. Last year, 2016, yeah. Which got pretty middle-of-the-road reviews. Yeah, it got middle-of-the-road reviews. It wasn't quite... Um, you know, and I can, like, I, I'm not salty about the reason at all. Yeah. I, I love Street Fighter 5, even though it's not one of my favorite Street Fighters. Uh, I love that game. Uh, primarily because I play Street Fighter competitively. I used to pay my rent with that in, uh, nice. back in the day, or at least yeah. buy, buy my, my school books with it as well, yeah, yeah. Um, competing in tournaments and such. So Which game know, was that? That was at the time that was Street Fighter 4. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so does the competitive circuit kind of follow the latest release? Yes, okay. exactly, yeah. Uh, consistently, the prize pots for, for Pro Tours and Evolution tournaments and stuff like that, that was uh, Street Fighter 5 is the big money pot, right? It's like one three times with the next... Oh yeah. Plays. Um, so it's always the current Street Fighter is the biggest prize spot. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's fair. Uh, does Capcom usually put up the prizes? Capcom has a, a, a sort of think of like you know how tennis is like they have Wimbledon, they have yeah, yeah. You know, the France, or whatever. Uh, here they got um, Capcom Pro Tour. So okay. it's like four different events. Evolution Fighting Game Tournament is one of them. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they offer like pretty big prize prize spots, like oh. thousands of dollars. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, when are you going to compete? No, first? never. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> something you guys may not know is that uh, fighting games in general, uh, Street Fighter specifically, but fighting games in general require these crazy um, reaction times. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you are reacting to frames on the TV. So, like, well, the minute you hit your mid-20s, you're already ancient. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, one of the... Um, one of the big criticisms of Five was the amount of frames that you had to counter, right? Because yeah. obviously there's, um, I feel like we can't talk about Street Fighter without talking about Moment Thirty Seven. Yeah. So yeah. Moment Thirty Seven, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the in a tournament, a Street Fighter tournament, there were two players, Daigo and Justin Wong. Justin Wong. So <laughs> it's named after Daigo because he had, basically had one pixel of health left. He could take no no further damage. Uh, and his opponent basically unleashed their special, which is like fifteen rapid fire attacks in a row. And with a single frame window, so at 30 FPS is the game 60. run? It runs at 60. So at 60 frames per second, you have to hit 15 of those in a row uh, with perfect timing. And he managed to get all 15 in a row and go on to win the match. Not to mention the jump before the last one comes out so yeah. to maximize his combo. Yeah. Wow. What you guys don't know is that this move, uh, Chun-Li's super, uh, is instant. 
Like you do it yeah. and there's no frames to react. So Daigo actually inputted the parry before before it came, before it came wow. out. Wow. Like, so yeah. uh, if you guys haven't seen it, Evo Moment 37 is great. Yeah. This is Yeah, that was the only Street Fighter footage that I'd seen before meeting them. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's great to watch because like you watch as like the announcers just lose their mind too because <laughs> every everyone in the audience is like, how the fuck is this happening? Yeah. yeah. Um, like Daigo Daigo Umihara is. Uh, known for that stuff. So yeah, yeah. you just search his name. He's literally done that in every single Street Fighter game. Something oh, yeah. like that. Something wow. like that. Um, so. But I mean, it's easier in five, right? Yeah. <laughs> I actually definitely try to emulate his play. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's well. known for um, just predicting what the opponent's going to do, throwing out unsafe moves, like trying to parry something before it comes out. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, that usually comes out on top. Okay. Uh, well, that's very cool. I, I do believe he lost that tournament that he... The Evo Moment 37. Uh, I believe he won. Oh, yeah? That one, yeah. That's Street Fighter 3 tournament. Okay. I believe he won. But yeah, we can fact check that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, that was like 13 when he did that. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I definitely didn't see it live, but definitely, yeah. Okay. Within the last year, it was the first time I, I had seen it. So. Okay. Um, Street Fighter. Uh, for those of you who haven't clued in yet, it's obviously a fighting game. Um, 2D, there's two opponents, and you just kind of go at each other. Uh, lots of combos. For anyone who's more familiar with something like Mortal Kombat, uh, which I think is maybe more popular in North America. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's essentially the the same game. I don't know if that's gonna insult no, you. No, that that will definitely. Insult. I've <laughs> heard that they talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, they've been around for a while. The first one came out in the eighties for sure. Eighty seven, yeah. Eighty seven. Oh, eighty seven. So um, Street Fighter two came out in nineteen ninety one. Yep. So I guess it was four year a four year gap between the two. Yeah. That was the year Ethan and I were born, actually. <laughs> I mean, so this series predates both of them. Yeah. yeah. By a couple years. So 30 years old. It's, yeah, it's 30, yeah. Uh, uh, wow. The, as far as the story goes, obviously, depending on who, because each, well, most of the games feature like a fighting tournament that you're fighting your way through as whichever character you choose. Obviously, depending on which character you beat the tournament with, you're going to have a different ending. So as far as story canon goes, uh, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and say like, well, one of these guys won. You can usually say, like when you move on to Street Fighter 2, you could probably say, well, I guess Street Fighter 2 is a bad example, but when you move on to Street Fighter uh, 4, let's say, which comes after Street Fighter 2, you can say, okay, well, Bison didn't win in Street Fighter 2 because he literally takes over the world and like shrouds it in darkness. You know, he's, he's the antagonist. So obviously he didn't win. Exactly, yeah. And like with most fighting games, Mortal Kombat aside, because it has its own dedicated story mode, as does Street Fighter 5 is yeah. anything. Um, Tekken's a good example here. Like, they have the game, it comes out, and then the next Tekken we find out which of those storylines are true. Oh, okay. Uh, Spoilers, it's always Gene. It's yeah. always, <laughs> he wins every single time. Yeah. So, yeah. In Street Fighter, it's, it's depending on... Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, several people's stories could be true. Yeah, that's it. It's, it seems like it could work on, on a lot of levels. You just gotta kind of retcon a couple little things. Exactly. Which Capcom has shown uh, dozens of times that they're completely willing to retcon. <laughs> like, they retcon an entire game. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, besides the Street Fighter games, there are crossover games, uh, such as Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, those aren't canon. According to Cap Capcom, none of the animes, none of the mangas, none of that is canon. It is just the games that are canon. Hmm. Um, Except for the Zone Club Band, I mean, that's canon. <laughs> <laughs> that's Lord Boy's canon. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's canon here. Um, yeah, so I always find it really weird when like, the owner of an intellectual property will allow something to be made and then completely be like, oh, no, but that's not canon. That's a, you yeah. know, it's like, well, why, why'd you go to the trouble of making a Street Fighter branded movie if it's not part of the Street Fighter collective unit? I didn't even know there was one. Oh, absolutely. There's so many. Yeah, really? Starting from the sure. beginning, of course. Jackie Chan from Chun Li once. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, parody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, excluding the live action one, there's the Street Fighter 2 movie by the official Street Fighter 2 movie, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Probably the only good Street Fighter movie ever made. Okay. Other than um, the John Claude Bennett. Oh no, that's one of the best movie of all time. Uh, then you got Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha Generations. You have yeah. uh, the Street Fighter 2B series. You have another American-made Street Fighter cartoon. Wow. Uh, and then of course two Street Fighter 4 movies, which were branded like that as well. Okay, it was <laughs> mostly made in Japan. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think there's a there's a cartoon that I think was made here. It's very American. John Hell's like GI Joe. Okay. Uh, Go Joe. Yeah, goofy as hell. <laughs> uh, and uh, and um, of course the John Claude Van Damme. Movie, yeah. Which nice. So the movies were called like Street. It's the Street Fighter Two movie was called Street Fighter Two. Street Fighter Two, the animated movie, I believe. Okay. Full, full title. Of I, I love that. Like yeah. there's no street. Not, it's not a sequel to a Street Fighter One movie, but exactly. it's just <laughs> the movie Street Fighter Two. <laughs> have either of you guys seen it? No. no I definitely okay, not it's excellent. Probably the closest to the canon it's ever been. Okay. The events in the movie uh, don't actually happen at all. But okay. The characters actually act and look like how they did in Street Fighter. The way they would. Wow. Yeah. It's it's pretty wild. It's really well animated. Excellent fight scenes. Good, you know, music. 
that they had in the 90s. Yeah. It was, I think it was made like right after the movie came out. Okay. Pretty much called classic. I gotta say, having spoken to you about Street Fighter for what? Five minutes now. <laughs> I'm pretty confident you're gonna ace this quiz. I got for you. Yeah. Well, I'm putting you on blast now. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. You're building it up so you can fail. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's how I get my rocks off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's why you're here, Nandy, just to make me feel good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, what is the canon? Uh, canonically, Street Fighter is the same universe as three other games: Rival Schools, Final Fight. And Saturday Night Slam Masters, mm. which are all uh, similar. <laughs> That's a real name. Um, very, very serious game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with uh, actually characters from Final Fight appear in later Street Fighter games, mm-hmm. namely Cody, Guy, Rolento, Hugo, Poison, Maki, 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 yeah. and Sodom, like the tuna fish. And the brand new Street Fighter character that was just announced last week, uh, who's Abigail. Oh, uh, yeah, Street Fighter Five a character just came out, uh, I think, a month ago or two weeks ago. Okay, from yeah. Final Fight? From Final Fight, yeah, he's oh, awesome. Final Fight. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Stage yeah. is really cool, reminiscent of the music. Yeah, nice. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. So you played the Final Fight games? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Not a Final Fight expert, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so who's your favorite Final Fight character? Guy, yeah. Guy hands down. Guy hands down. Yeah, yeah, ninjas. Right. ninjas are ninjas. Ninjas. Yeah, that's true. You got one ninjas. I'm more of a samurai guy, but... I guess we can we can work that out. Yeah, you and me. So yeah. We'll take it outside. I'm such a stranger to the fighting game genre, so like the closest thing I played to a fighting game is For Honor, and real fighting game fans wouldn't call it a fighting game. Yeah, James is actually pretty good at that. Yeah. You, you'd be actually pretty rad in fighting games. Okay. Tomorrow, another coworker uh, I recently picked up Street Fighter Five, so wants to get good. I'm training with them all afternoon. Oh, yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I I I guess I can air this out now. I will defend For Honor's uh, genre claim that it is a fighting game. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, there, there are definitely modes which are less conducive to it, but straight up one-on-one combat is parry timing and combos. True. Like you have your yeah. combo list. That, like it's, and the it's a very impure form. So, yeah. so just uh, I want to follow this up with another yeah. question. Uh, just to be clear, we're 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 arguing the semantics about what a fighting game is. Uh, I mean, because I, I guess I take umbrage with the fact that that people are so vehemently against it being a fighting game. Okay, I do um, too love it. I do like Fallen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great game, and yeah. If Four Honor is a fighting game, then Ryu is a wizard. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there's an argument to be made there. Explain. Explain. Sure. Yeah. Um, flesh this out. Flesh well, this out. I mean, why not? Yeah. Why isn't he a wizard, right? Like, he, what's a wizard? he has the sets we know how to, right? Absolutely. So yes, definitely, he shoots electricity. Yeah. I'm wizard. not. I'm not sure I have an <laughs> argument that Ryu not being a wizard. Just, <laughs> just so you know, like you might have sold me on this. Lord Boy's canon. Ryu is a wizard. Um, um, got out of that one. <laughs> I was so ready. <laughs> um, well, it's like you say, he's got the Shoryuken, the, the Rising Dragon Fist, I Absolutely. believe. Hadikin, which is he shoots a ball of lightning, yeah. which I'm not sure what the translation of that. And he has one other move in the original games, which I can't remember the name of. Uh, the Tatsumaki Senpukyaki. Yeah. Which, means punch. which means punch. Which means punch. It means yeah. punch puncher. Yeah, the yeah. hurricane kick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> It is close enough. Yeah, so <laughs> Hadouken roughly translates to energy punch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so even yeah. though it's not really a punch. So Nambi, you spent some time in Japan, right? I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, 2014-2015, I spent uh, the entirety of 2014 there. Um, arcade team was really great. Rekindled my interest in Street Fighter, actually. Oh, yeah? Just as I was sort of dying off. Yeah. Kicked right back up. <laughs> uh, awesome. The arcade scene's wild there. I would, yeah, I, I, I bet it. it's not the same as here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know if you guys, um, when you guys were younger, I guess... Um, I'm a little bit older than them, a few years older. So yeah. when I was young, uh, arcades were so huge. Yeah. Arcades were big, right? So it was such a huge moment when my older brother would bring me over to the arcade. Yeah. And of course, Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat would be there. Being eight years old, I wasn't allowed to play Mortal Kombat. That's how I got into Street Fighter. Bonding with oh, my brother. Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. Uh, he would just bring me there. I would line up. and. Uh, it is so funny that, I mean, Mortal Kombat probably lost out on a lot of business for making their game, deciding to make their game M rated today. Eh? I, I guess. That was a big pull of it, too. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I wasn't old enough to play. I could have played, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But my brother and my family are very much stick to the ERSRB ratings, like, you know. Yeah, okay. Um, and I'm glad they did, you know, because then I would have been a scrub if I'm just... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> some Mortal, Mortal Kombat, believe you. Yeah, Nandy's yeah. talked to me a bit about this before. There's something about um, the way that you can branch off from different combos and things, and Mortal Kombat is a very shallow game compared to... It is, player. yeah. When you think about uh, a fighting game's depth is ultimately sort of judged by their amount of viable options on attack and defense. Um, Street Fighter as a whole has a bunch more viable options, whereas Mortal Kombat, you normally just go with your character's best viable option all the time. Okay. So it just comes down to who hits each other first, and yeah. you do a very static, janky-looking combo okay. afterwards. Um, not to diss Mortal Kombat. You yeah. know, I, I have bought every single one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do okay. enjoy fighting games. I'm a fighting game fan, not just a Street Fighter fan. But right. uh, 
to just hear it in the same sentence, it kind of hurts. <laughs> 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 That's it. But I mean, as for someone who understands the combos like so thoroughly, is it almost like more relaxing to play Mortal Kombat? Like, yes. In a yeah. sense, because you don't have to worry yeah. about branching off your combos so much. It's kind of just like, do yeah, my yes. inputs and, and I'm, I'm hitting people. Yeah, it's chock full with single pair modes. It's yeah. got a better story, I'll yeah. say. It's a better, much better, more fully fleshed out story. And the fatalities are pretty cool. Yeah, right? it's cool. <laughs> you know, that's, it's, and, you know, it, it is an icon. I don't, I don't, if Mortal Kombat didn't exist, Street Fighter would not be as popular as it is now. Street Fighter 2 set the world on fire, believe it or not. But yeah. Mortal Kombat really brought a mainstream, mainstream audience to games that went on. Street Fighter always has seemed more the competitive scene as opposed yeah. to like yeah. you say the main stream. Yeah. Um so eight Street Fighter games released so far. Uh not including the crossovers. Yeah. Or the, the main, re-releases. Main line, yeah. yeah. Or the re-releases. So uh the games in order of the story are Street Fighter, Street Fighter the Alpha series, which is one, two, and three, although one is not a canon story. Uh Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Four, Street Fighter Five, then Street Fighter Three. Correct. Uh <laughs> That is that is not the release order. The release order is Street Fighter, Street Fighter Two, Alpha series. Correct. Yeah. Uh, then three, then four, then five. I don't think we've talked about a game that it, the games came out in the <laughs> yeah, same order that the story. The story. Yeah. 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 Only you guys do Lord Boy Metal Gear. Yeah. <laughs> oh same, my god. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be an Odyssey. That uh, yeah. Uh, that sounds like a computer thing. I, I don't know. If, yeah. Do you have much experience with Metal Gear? I don't. I have some. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've yeah. beaten a couple of the games, but okay. I've beaten two and three, and I've played four and five. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I don't particularly like them, but no? okay. I'm just I'm not a big fan of stealth games, and oh, okay. so yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the combat, like I like Street, um, Street Fighter. I liked uh, Metal Gear Solid Five because I found there was a lot more viable options, and I just wanted to run in and gun. Oh, yeah. um, Still Ethan's difficult, though. Ethan just recorded a Let's Play for Doom because yeah. he's more of a <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was very much a study game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic game. Yeah. 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 Run and gun, yeah. Yeah, I cannot, I cannot stress how much fun I had with that game. I will play that too. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm putting a Let's Play up hopefully in the coming weeks. Hopefully this week. I played the that. demo last weekend, which is just... You play up until you get the assault rifle, pretty much, okay. and it was fun. The first level. Yeah, it was. It's two levels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the first two. Yeah. I watched the let's play up until he cocked his shotgun to the beat. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool. I mean, just the okay. The soundtrack is probably I listen to metal, and the soundtrack is probably the best original soundtrack I've heard in a game. And I don't even I couldn't even say how long it is. So like banging, just like gets really you perfect. going to kill demons. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, you're just rewarded for keeping on running and killing. Running things. and killing. Like, yeah, that's not that's a go off the tangent too much. But yeah. would you have you ever played the God of War series? Yeah, yeah. So I just finished God of War three, three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. last that's, week. It's an right. upcoming episode. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the God of War is basically the, the action non shooting Doom. I guess. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Male power fantasy. That's it. Thing. Well, I mean, the new Doom was great because like that was the original Doom as well, right? Like I've beaten Doom one and Doom two. I played Doom three. I never beat it, but. Uh, yeah. So now I've beaten three of the four, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're always just that. It's just like run around, get the biggest gun you can, use use all the ammo you have for it until you have no more, and then just switch it out to the next one. So, <laughs> uh, speaking of metal, though, we are spraying from the past. So <laughs> where, where are we? So um, key characters in the uh, in the Street Fighter series, uh, obviously Ryu and Ken. Sure. They're uh, the two playable characters from the first game. Could we could we go into the the history of how Ken was created? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys have you guys ever seen footage of Street Fighter One? Mm-hmm. No, I haven't. I watched it just this morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Street Fighter One was played on an arcade machine that basically had these big buttons. That yeah. the harder you press it, the harder the punch comes out. Oh my god. So if you want to do a light punch, you didn't have a dedicated light punch. Light punch button, you just tap it. Yeah. Like yeah. If you punch yeah. it, harder hard punch, you slam that. Wow. Right? So of course that would destroy the arcade machine. Yeah, it, it sounds like that. <laughs> that's why the game was not successful. Yeah. Uh, Ken, uh, the, the story basically followed Ryu, yeah. uh, who had red hair at the time, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, little white bandana. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's the essential karate man. Yeah, yeah no, so. he's literally the karate man. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ken, if someone else joined in, um, of course there's no other characters to play. You can't play as any other character no. just Ryu. But if another player joined in, they play as Red Ryu with blonde hair. <laughs> with blonde hair. Oh. Who is Ken. Ken. Who is uh, Reckon. Hey, yeah. The palette change. That's it. Yeah. yeah. He's literally, like, Ken is literally Luigi and yes. Ryu is Mario. Uh, and <laughs> if, because at one point when you're playing the arcade game, I believe you fight each other. Mm-hmm. And whoever wins that goes on to complete the tournament. So whoever wins the fight between the two players, that player yeah. will go on to Correct. And also at any time someone else could buzz in, play you. If they beat you and you don't want to, you continue the story as Ken. Oh. Oh, so yeah. There you go. So, 
I did play Street Fighter 1 for the first time when I was in Japan on the, one of those arcade machines. It's yeah. impossible to play. Did you yeah. play against someone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How did you do? Uh, I played against Matt. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was not, did not turn out well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, don't recommend. Street Fighter 1 is a bad game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, after Ryu and Ken, Ryu is probably, I mean, he's definitely the main character of the series, and I guess you'd call him the protagonist, even though in Street Fighter 1, he was a bit of a bad guy. Retcon in as a, being a bad guy, of course. Yeah, he's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, he felt the power of the dark side. Um, they're, they're, well, the, the big antagonist of the game would be uh, Mike Bison, known as Vega in Japan. Um, the names get a little uh, <laughs> interesting let's, here. Let's go over this. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is a, this, is a fun, this is a fun little thing. So when Street Fighter II was released in the United States, uh, there's a character uh, called Balrog in the U.S. version. I like that name. Uh, in the Japanese version, he's called Mike Bison, and he's he's a, a big black boxer. So did you see where they're going? With yeah. that? <laughs> so oh Cap, Capcom, <laughs> Capcom was really worried about a lawsuit from Mike Tyson mm -hmm. over the likeness being in the game, uh, and also the fact that this guy was a bad guy, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so when they present, oh, also when they presented the game to Capcom USA's marketing department. Uh, they believe that the name Vega, which is the name of another character, uh, Spanish assassin, did not fit the big bad guy. They thought it was too soft or whatever. So what they decided to do, they rotated the three names. So the boxer is known as Mike Bison in Japan and Balrog in the U.S. The Spanish assassin is known as Balrog in Japan and Vega in the U.S. And the evil dictator and head of the Shadaloo, basically the triads, uh, is known as Vega in Japan and Mike Bison in the U.S. Very good, Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> and so, just to add on that, to this day, um, Balrog in uh, the boxer now yeah. in the United States, so I've always known him as Balrog. Yeah, yeah. Balrog, if you go to Japanese territory, Balrog, he still thinks he's Spanish Ninja because they don't have that meaning convention here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's um, a... Also, Mike Tyson at that point had pushed his girlfriend down a flight of stairs, I think, or whatever he did. Oh, yeah. Point, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. Street Fighter came he out did a bunch of when he was going to prison. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my uh, God. So, of course, they didn't want anything to do with that. Yeah. Well. Um, You'll find that a lot, that, that Capcom did that a lot with many characters. There's a Final Fight character who is in Street Fighter 4 as well. Yeah. Uh, she's a, a Final Fight um, punching guy, like a non-disposable character. She oh, just okay, come okay. in and... One of the characters used to beat each other for no reason. Oh my god. Um, but of course, yeah. it's a woman, right? Yeah, so, yeah. like, comes over to the United States. In Japan, the gender roles are pretty strong. They don't really care about that. Yeah, yeah. Come to the United States, you know, you're not going to smack around a woman. <laughs> oh, of course you're not. So, Capcom, being in the 90s, uh, sort of said, uh, uh, transvestite. Oh, that makes it better? Oh, no. right? so, that does not age well into 2017, <laughs> man. <laughs> Absolutely not. But let me, let me tell you what happens as it goes on. So, of course, since this person was originally a man, it's okay to beat him up. So that, that, was, yeah. that was a story. So Poison would come in. And it's just in, in, in the U.S. and the U.S. canon, still to this day, Poison, who is now a Street Fighter 4 character, a Street Fighter 4 character, is a transvestite. A transvestite. Wow. In, in Japan, it's a woman. Flat out woman. Yeah. And Capcom now has sort of like never corrected themselves. And with the big, you know, the world becomes more left as we go on. Yeah, yeah. Accepting. Uh, big human rights issue with trans people and, and everything now. Yep. Capcom is riding that. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, of course. We had a trans yeah. character since the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> How did they deliver that information, though? Is in the game? Like, did they say, like, trans like there's the transvestite that yeah. beat it up? If you look at the official, uh, not, not all name, but this was, like, in yeah. the booklet. Right? Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. Whatever. Back when they had booklets. Yeah. Oh, I love it, that. They left it ambiguous, as, as they still do now. Right. Because uh, coming down hard one way or another is going to be bad. Yeah. 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 That's okay. whatever you interpret. Poison being a very fun, fun character. They actually made her much more muscular in uh, for Street Fighter Four. So, uh, wow. I think it's, I think it's a yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, other important character would be Sagat. 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 Yeah. Sagat. Um, he was the, uh, I guess, the final fight in the original Street Fighter. Um, which I'll get into his whole fight with Ryu. Final fight being like the last fight, not yeah, the, not the yeah, final fight yeah, game, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the last fight of the first Street Fighter. Nothing to do with final fight. Yeah, uh, like I said, we're not talking about it here. That's not what we talked about. Mm. Uh, <laughs> then there is Chun Li, who I felt I should mention because she's pretty iconic for uh, a host of reasons. She's a pretty lady, yeah. so she she's got pretty popular. Strongest woman in the world to this yeah. day. If you go to her official stats, her weight says question mark question mark. Oh wow. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> her weight. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. Is that cool? I'm not sure I like that. Why? Because <laughs> it, per it perpetuates the idea that women need to be ashamed of their ways. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right? The game you sexist? No, I was thinking that she was so strong that she would never have to reveal it. That she was uh, just nobody like, could make her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> it's great because it's like a fighting game too, right? So obviously before a fight, fighters are weighed for their weight class or whatever. Sure. And she's just like a 700 pound. <laughs> she's made of titanium and like nobody <laughs> realized because she won't get on the scale. <laughs> Chun-Li is pretty iconic, but you know, like I got everyone's seen Chun-Li. She has massive legs. Yeah, yeah. She's the yeah. strongest woman in the world according to self-proclaimed strongest yeah. woman. All those, all those kicks. She's an expert martial artist and she's a detective for Interpol as well. Uh, she's also seeking revenge for the death of her father at the hands of the antagonist, Mike Bison. Uh, I will probably use the North American naming conventions. That's, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and just, I, I, I included Rose. She's not such a huge character. I just think she has a really interesting origin story where she is uh, Mike Bison, Bison's, the good, the good bit of the antagonist, like drawn out of his soul and then manifest in human form. Uh, she's an Italian fortune teller. Oh. Yeah. Who you would not think would do well in um, an international fighting tournament. Well, she's a comment. <laughs> she's like, yeah. She's, she's <laughs> whips that scarf around, yeah. shooting crystal balls at people. Yeah. Wow. She, well, yeah. She's based on the anime character Lisa Lisa from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, who also uh, is a fortune teller. And she, uh, Lisa Lisa uses her scarf to fight as well. She draws power into her scarf and she did not know this. Yeah. Hey. Um, when jo- uh, Joseph Joestar, the the lead character of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure meets her. They meet in Venice, which is her stage in, oh, uh, in Street Fighter. Mm. So, yeah. That's really cool. A little bit of trivia. Mm-hmm. You'll find that a lot um, in Street Fighter. Like, uh, even, uh, you know, Mike Bison uh, slash Balrog yeah, yeah. being based off Mike Tyson aside. You know, you got uh, Fei Long, who's clearly based off Bruce Lee. It's yeah, basically yeah, yeah. Bruce Lee. <laughs> um, you know, many other characters that yeah. uh, uh, are based off of either real world or other inspired by Yeah, them. that's it. There's a lot of pop culture. Uh, which, I mean, you gotta, if you just gotta create characters for your fighting game, why not base one off Bruce Lee, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> the king. Um, so, let's get into each game specifically. We'll start with Street Fighter V. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with Street Fighter. This one's obviously the most straightforward. There's, like, very little hand-sticking. Even, like, most of the story that's in it is reconned in after the fact, because originally it was just, like, an arcade, like Nandy said, punch the, punch the machine as hard as you can <laughs> kind of game. Yeah, as the story goes, Ryu wins the tournament, uh, defeating the ominous Muay Thai fighter, Sagat. Mm. Sagat. What's he, he look like? Sagat is a, maybe seven foot seven yeah. tall monster th- uh, Thai person from yeah. Thailand. He uh, fights Muay Thai, eye patch, um, which we'll get into why he has that later. <laughs> but he has, uh, you know, you ever step up a... Think of a stereotypical man who does Muay Thai, right? The wraps around his legs, wraps around his yeah. hands. Okay. Big, bald, huge, but like the nicest man ever. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he beat down Ryu and then went to go help him up. Wow. Yeah, and Ryu was taken over by the Sasui no Hado, um, or Dark Hado is what they call it. Yeah. Which is an evil energy that he struggles with throughout all the games. And he just uppercutted Sagat yeah. through his body, okay. opened up his chest completely. Sagat has a huge scar. Yeah. He and basically hey. ruined his life. Yeah. <laughs> that dark <laughs> energy, that's like what Akuma is all into. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so all that was reckoned in. Originally, it was just you have the final fight. Yep. And then they were like, oh, let's give this guy a badass scar. And then they're like, why should we give him a badass scar? And then they're like, oh, because Ryu probably felt the dark side of the force and decided to do a short you can on him at the last second. And <laughs> he was trying to help him up. And he was just like, okay, let's roll with it, guys. Yeah. Um, Which also created our tragic hero who is struggling with this uh, horrible, horrible that's possession it. of this. Mm, that's uh, it. Because he, he knows he, he has the ability to do, obviously, like, great evil. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's just struggling with it because uh, that's you know how I do. I have, a, I have a couple of paragraphs on it. But it basically, um, it manifests in people who have an overwhelming desire to win. So it's basically, like, people who are, are greedy. Everybody who wants to be the best, they're typically the characters who have to deal with this dark shadow. Okay. Um, so their martial arts style is uh, ansatsuken, uh, which is just like it, it's not a real martial arts style. It's just it just basically means assassin's fist. Okay. Right? It's a horrible martial arts style that uses that. That's how we know how to to destroy their enemies. Their Ryu and Ken's master made a new version of that that excluded mm. all the killing moves. Yeah. Okay. Um, so of course, but if you're a practitioner of that, that falls under the things that Ethan was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, you could get possessed. Okay. Yeah. Which Ryu does occasionally. And because Ryu's father was. Had the the power to use the Satsumi no Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was killed by Akuma mm. later on. Yeah. There's actually allusions to Akuma being actually the Ryu's father now. Oh, yeah. And in the movies, he is. Like in almost every Oh, movie. yeah. Uh, that, that's uh, so yeah. Funny. But either way, like it's all ambiguous. Yeah, so. that's it. Um, yeah. The blurb that I, I guess was most of the, the wiki pages and the blogs that I saw said that he killed him. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe I saw allusions to him being related to him. I didn't realize. It didn't even like click in my head. Like, right. oh, maybe it's his father. Yeah. And I mean, one of the great terrible terms. Street Fighter cartoons, uh, Ryu has a little brother. Has oh, a last name as well. Uh, Hoshi. Oh, yeah. Not, he doesn't actually have a last name. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then his brother ended up being a famous um, son. Okay. So at the very least, he's somewhat related. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. At least it's a stepdad. Yeah. When your step when your stepdad uses the dark head dough, like <laughs> that's why we use a redhead redhead stepchild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His father beat that or stepdad beat it out of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Child abuse. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> so he, he, he did he did so got dirty uppercutted him cheaply women tournament that way. So yeah. I was trying to help him up help him out if the match was over. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. He was well the match was over yeah. and then he literally just ruined ruined his life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Runescott's life drove him to a life of crime, actually. Um, but just to touch on the Setsuino oh. Hado a little bit more, uh, it's a form of key rooted in dark aspect, darker aspects of human nature, like I said. To tap into the Setsuino Hado, a person must be so consumed with the desire for victory and perfection to be close to death or else possess such intense rage and hatred that they are willing to kill. Absolutely. Yeah. And so while he's not part of the Street Fighter canon, um, he is a what-if character in almost all Street Fighter games, evil Ryu. Yeah. It's like a what-if Ryu gave in and was uh, like Akuma. Uh, ends up being my favorite character in all the vast majority of games. He's just like Ryu unleashed with what? a bunch of crazy moves. <laughs> uh, cool. yeah. Yeah. So um, learning the Setsui no Ado is the first step in learning the most fatal technique known to all other all martial arts. Do you know what it's called? Uh, oh, the... Um, is it the, the Raging Demon? The Raging Demon, yeah. yeah. The Sun Goku, <laughs> Sun Goku Shatsu. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh, a move that a lot of people, when I was young, uh, when Akuma got into Street Fighter 2, yeah. uh, a lot of people didn't think it existed. No. There was an argument as to how to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it ended up being, like, you know, not like Street Fighter was our movement button, right? Yeah. yeah. This move is a uh, light punch, light punch, forward, like kick, hard punch. Okay. Just in succession like that, okay. very, very fast, within, like, uh, less than a second. Okay. So, like, of course, they don't even, they didn't even release the move list or anything no, yeah, at all. Yeah. Oh. Occasionally, you'd see someone come to the arcade and pull that off, and you think they glitched the game or yeah, something. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's, yeah. That's great. That uh, was like, something that was so prevalent in old games. They like, Easter eggs were really, like, so much better. Uh, Don't you miss those days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I remember the first time I accidentally found the Hadouken in Mega Man X. Yeah. Where you, you have to unlock all the power-ups, <laughs> yeah. and then you go to this one stage of, like, for the boss. Yeah. yeah, you do this, like... It's the slide this, jump, right? To get to this really tough it's, part. It's, it's Armored Armadillo, yeah. and you're on the minecart, and at the end of the level, you do this big jump, and you have to jump off the minecart, you have to get up to this oh, ledge, and then you have to do, like, a dash jump to get up to the top. That's top, it. Top. You're jumping at the apex of yeah, the yeah, level. Yeah. You have to the whole stage. Yeah. Oh, and man, then yeah. you um, you unlock the Hadouken, which is a one, one-hit one kill for anybody it hits, bosses included, but you have to be max health to, to use it, basically. Okay. So you can't take any damage in the stage, and you have to get to the boss with max health, and then you can use the Hadouken on them. Same, same motion, right? Corpse forward. Punch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Both Capcom games, so. Yeah. yeah. So, chrono- or in terms of the storyline... What would come next would be Street Fighter Alpha 1. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I actually didn't look up the story of Street Fighter Alpha 1, so I'm going to learn some things. Yeah. So, Street Fighter Alpha would be the next game in the series. With that, with my pause, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Street Fighter Alpha was the next game in the series. Um, Street Fighter Alpha came out after Street Fighter 2, uh, but it, it takes place between uh, Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter. Uh, it's meant to bridge the gap between the first two games. So, Street Fighter Alpha came out. And um, it didn't really do, it had like a very final ending um, and it didn't work on a lot of levels and a lot of the characters, a lot of people weren't happy with. So when Street Fighter Alpha 2 came out, they literally just rewrote Alpha 1. It's the same game story-wise, they just rewrote it so like a couple things worked better. Okay. So um, yeah, I'll mostly just, I mean, I'm just going to go over Street Fighter Alpha 2. Alpha uh, 2 being one of my favorites like non numbered, non uh, non official. It's canon, but it's not like part of the yeah, series. Yeah, it is canon. My favorite yeah. by far. Whereas Street Fighter awesome. Alpha is not considered canon yeah. because of what it did to the storyline. The Alpha Two came out after Two, though. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a version of That's Alpha Two on Super Nintendo. Okay. That is oh, yeah. actually really really cool. Like it's Alpha is a very if you look at the mainline um, uh, games and you look at the character the sprites like how yeah. they look like they almost look like like what a painting of a real life would be right okay. the colors are very dull there's lots of browns okay, lots yeah. of shading whereas alpha is a an, okay. oh yeah <laughs> it looks very distinctly animated yeah. awesome so. well that's good yeah. but street fighter 2 was fairly bright as well no um like it well it didn't look like an anime no yeah like not, not like not like alpha okay. yeah like with his huge eyes yeah, alpha. yeah. <laughs> okay that's fair that's um fair. so yeah although alpha 2 has different ending it's an ending sorry uh it's just supposed to it's just there to rewrite alpha storyline 
unlike the last game, this one, uh, unlike Street Fighter 1, this one isn't a tournament, but it's just a bunch of instances of people wandering around and getting into fights. So uh, pretty much all the other Such games do feature... <laughs> yeah. Such is life. <laughs> pretty much all the other games do feature a tournament, which, like, kind of makes... I mean, it, it gives reason to why people are just, like, fighting each other all the time. Uh, this one is, nope, literally just, hey, there's that guy. I don't like him. I just remember that I don't like him. Uh, and they decide to punch. They punch it out. Uh, <laughs> so on the one hand, uh, we're in the aftermath of Ryu's big win. So now everyone wants a piece of him, right? We got the, the world champ. Uh, Ken wants to challenge his old rival. Sagat definitely wants it, desperately wants his rematch. Uh, Sakura wants to meet her idol. Uh, Akuma, the man who killed Ryu and Ken's master, Gukin, uh, the one who uses the dark kaido, uh, he's interested in, to, in Ryu's journey into darkness, so he wants to be his Sith Lord uh, <laughs> and basically bring him to the dark side. Uh, he and Ryu have a showdown on Akuma's island, but Akuma <laughs> just punches the island, I guess, Correct, yeah. <laughs> and, and destroys the whole thing. What? Just sinks it. Yeah. In, in Street Fighter Alpha 2, um, the ending of Ryu's ending, you go through, you fight Akuma, uh, and you find out that Akuma sort of, I, I believe he cares about him in some way, or at least okay. cares about his development, okay. you know, as, as you were saying. So you start to learn how, how the difference between Akuma and the rest of the characters. So like the rest of the characters, Street Fighter is very grounded, not grounded in reality, but strength-wise, uh, characters are not that much stronger than real life people. Yeah. Akuma punched the ground and <laughs> made an island explode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, not sick, but explode. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So after fighting with Ryu and giving him a little bit of a chance, uh, he punched to the ground. Yeah. Uh, and the island sunk, volcano exploded. Uh, Ryu ended up swimming back to shore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of a neat. Uh, and then Akuma basically says to Ryu, uh, "Go get good and come back and see me." <laughs> yeah. Says, uh, I get good is be evil. Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay. Embrace the dark side and. Seek me out when you are stronger. Uh, on the other hand, we have the rise of Mike Bison, ruler of the Shadowloo Crime Syndicate. Uh, so he's basically like a mob boss. He's a megalomaniac mass murderer. Also uh, from Thailand. Also from Thailand, yes. Uh, the base is just outside Bangkok, I believe, actually. Aptly enough, has enough people out for his blood because he's a criminal, right? So uh, U.S. Air Force bro, Charlie, <laughs> wants to take him down for the good of mankind. My man. My man, Charlie. <laughs> uh, just, like, straight up uh, goose out of Top Gun, right? <laughs> um, Chun-Li wants to avenge her father's death because it was at the hands of Mike Bison. Uh, Rose, like I said earlier, is um, who's literally the good side of him, wants to rid the world of his evil. Basically, just yin and yang trying to destroy each other. Uh, Bison has his eye, uh, mean, meanwhile, Bison has his eye on Ryu and is able to hunt him down, beat him up, kidnap him, torture him, and brainwash him while pumping him full of evil energy. The mm. plan is to make Ryu a suitable host for his own soul. So he found he finds a stronger body and he's like, I want to be in that body. He's like a hermit crab, basically. <laughs> Something about these specific games, since, they, since this was Bison's first appearance, uh, Bison is known for changing bodies throughout the series. He's no longer in the series, the Bison series is dead. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> his first body is very muscular, big, you know, huge shoulders. He's like much yeah. short monster of a, a big time yeah. and, uh, and changes to the series as he yeah. acquires new bodies. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, Sagat's anger becomes a downfall. He uh, loses his former student, Adon. Uh, realizing the error of his ways, he throws a fight against Dan Hibiki. Uh, Street Fighter's resident doofus pushover is the line that I got. <laughs> Can we talk about Dan? Yeah, I, I hope yeah. you would. There was a series called King of Fighters. Okay. It came out in the 90s just after Street Fighter uh, featured characters that were clear knockoffs of Street Fighter. Okay. Um, you had uh, Ryo instead of Ryu. Oh my god. <laughs> wearing an orange gi instead of a white gi. Yeah. Oh. Shot, a, uh, I think it was called a, a Gadoken or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Instead of a with one hand instead of two. Like, it was a clear ripoff. Yeah, yeah. They had another lookalike, like a Ken version. Like, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was such a slap in the face to Capcom. And that series, while it was never as popular as Street Fighter, it's still alive today. Oh, yeah. It's a game that came out last year, a King of Fighters game, and it's very much its own series now. Okay. At the time, it was a carbon copy of Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. So, in an effort to sort of slap uh, SNK in the face, uh, the creators of yeah, King yeah. Fighters, uh, they made Dan, who has uh, Ryo's outfit, basically. Okay. basically. Ryo's move, a Gadoken. Uh, another R Robert's hair is ponytail, and he sucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, not just the storyline, my storyline is a complete goof. He wears like a pink gi. Yeah, yeah. He's a complete goof. He's an idiot. And gameplay wise, he's consistently the worst character in the game on oh, purpose. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they, that's hilarious. <laughs> there was one in Super Fighter Four. I remember, you know, people yeah. will correct me if they listen and I'm wrong. 
but Dan was the second to worst character in the game. Yeah, okay. And they made a balance patch to make him worse. Oh, yeah. To make sure that he's the worst. And consistently, he's been the running, uh, you know, punching bag. That's fantastic. Bag. Yeah, yeah that. that is hilarious. Yeah. And even his quote, he says, um, there's a, 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 a game, a classic game called God of Fighting, and they have King of Fighters. And one of his win quotes is, I may not be the King of Fighters, but I am the God of Fighting or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> so, <laughs> such an obvious call. <laughs> pretty, pretty cheeky. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's better than suing them, right? Like, yeah. If you're SNK, you're like, hey, that's probably just good publicity for them that's, at that point, right? Yeah. I didn't know about King of Fighters. Of course, yeah. We were talking about Street Fighter. <laughs> you <laughs> mentioned the, uh, of course, you mentioned Sagat's eye patch. Dan's father, who was similarly uh, an idiot and, uh, you know, a punching bag. Yeah. Sagat killed him uh, for ripping out his eye. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. That yeah. was a much, well, before, like, a long time before Street Fighter ever came into place. That's why Dan hates Sagat. Okay. okay. So, so, uh, so that's why... That's what makes it worse whenever Sagat uh, brings him out just to like beat the shit out of him, yeah. basically, because he's mad because he lost his, his former student. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it says here that Dan is obsessed with vengeance, and I guess that's why he'd be obsessed with vengeance. Uh, in this moment of clarity, Sagat starts to realize that maybe... Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention that Sagat joined uh, Shadowloo. Mm. After his downfall, he's t- he's working with uh, Mike Bison. Um, How to get your life ruined in one uppercut. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sounds like a good episode title. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he starts to realize that, hey, maybe crime syndicates, maybe they're full of bad people, you know? Maybe. Uh, yeah, it kind of has this moment of clarity. Where, like, you, like you said at the beginning, he is a good guy. He's a stand-up guy. Uh, he got done done bad uh, by Ryu and uh, kind of ruined his life, you know? But now even through all this, he sees, like, he has enough clarity to be like, you know what, this isn't the right path for me. So while uh, Ryu was getting pumped full of, um, dark energy, evil energy by Mike Bison. He eventually escapes, but Dark Ryu is created. Uh, dark Ryu is not considered canon. African American Ryu. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. Mr. Wilson. So, can you play as Dark Ryu, or um, in which game? In any of the games. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's the character in Alpha, at least Alpha Two, Alpha Three, mm. Street Fighter Four, and probably Street Fighter Five. Okay. Okay. What if character? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a he's a what if character. He's not canon in the story. Yeah, it's correct. just okay. in a lot of the games they're bringing back. Just so since fight. you just did the research, maybe you can tell me. I've always wondered to see if Ryu at this point being pumped full of dark energy, that whether that was Bison's psycho power or whether that was his own Satsuki no Hado taking over. No, I, as far as I could tell, see, because Mike Bison's power, like you said, is his psycho power. It's not necessarily the Satsuki no, no Hado. Um, it seems to be that he was. Pumping him with the psycho psycho energy to trigger like his Satsumi no Hado. Okay. So Dark Ryu is Satsumi no Hado. It's not the the psycho power. That's like the dark side of him. Cool. Uh, so I guess it, it's kind of an interesting parallel between um, Mike Bison and Rose, and now Ryu and Dark Ryu. Hmm. Whereas uh, Mike Bison, it was the good in him that got pushed out at a, at a certain point, which is not really clear as to why. Hmm. Um, but Dark Ryu, it's the bad in him that kind of got pushed out. Uh, that being said, he still deals with the Satsumi no Hedo. He's still day to day. He's still like, you know, it's like a heroin addiction. That's it. He's got the itch, you know, he's like, I just want to uppercut someone. I just want to punch someone to death. Yeah. Need my fix, yo. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of someone to like having to suppress the good side of them coming out. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I won't help this lady cross the street. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I hate my face. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's that's all that's all they need to do is just show Mike Bison some puppies. Yeah, that's it. Like, oh, you know what? Maybe being bad is not so good. Does he have a lisp in the game? Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the Super Nintendo game. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. It would have been uh, uh, Balrog though. Who would have had the correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's that's Mike Bison in okay. Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you really want to be like scared by a voice, uh, you could check out uh, Mike Bison. Bison. Uh, Bison's uh, Japanese voice. Oh yeah, terrifying. Oh yeah, his oh, English yeah. voice is like the least intimidating thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> really, really well voice casting him for, uh, for Japanese. Do awesome. you mean like Vega, Japanese Vega? Japanese Vega. Okay, yeah. but Emma Bison. <laughs> now, now when we start so talking about something like different, different round, round. <laughs> it is very confusing. Yeah. Uh, Dictator, Dictator, yeah. Boxer, Ninja. Is what okay. Heard of them when we cross borders? Oh yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, um, it's too late in the game for me to, <laughs> to get that in my head. <laughs> uh, Maybe by the end of the episode I'll get it right once. Yeah. Uh, and Bison. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Street Fighter uh, Alpha 3 would be the next game in the series. Obviously, if you're at home and you can figure that out, you're an idiot. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've got Street Fighter, Street Fighter Alpha 2, 
And now uh, it's Street Fighter Alpha. Also, please leave us a review. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know what you like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so once again, people are getting random fights. This is another game without a tournament. Uh, this time there is an actual end game though, and that Bison has a do doomsday weapon called the Psycho Drive. Uh, presumably, it was developed at the same time he was pumping Ryu full of the dark energy. Uh, he did this with the Shadaloo, his crim his criminal organization. He's one of the top four um, of said criminal organization. Mm -hmm. So everyone's out to get him for one reason or, or another. Uh, Guile, who was a character in Street Fighter Two, uh, so this is where Guile's kind of like origin stories retconned in, uh, he's sent on a mission to bring back his good buddy, Charlie. You mm -hmm. probably know his theme song, if you don't yeah, know that. It literally goes with anything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, well, let's see if we, we can clip it in. Or oh, we can clip it. Yeah. Yeah. oh, man, do a Street Fighter Five theme. is really good. Yeah? Oh, um, yeah. I haven't checked it out. I, you showed it to me at work, actually. It was good, but I still prefer the old okay. one. Yeah. yeah. Something about 8-bit music, man. It's yeah. Easier. It gets me in the, in the nostalgia feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Um... So the two of them, Charlie and Guile, uh, do end up destroying Bison's headquarters, but it costs Charlie his life. So he ends up, I believe, holding Bison uh, yeah. while the, the plant explodes, basically. That's it. Um, I believe the, the what happened to him before he died was a, a, a plane a helicopter came in and just riddled him with bullets. Oh, yeah. So he had to fight uh, Bison like that. Like that. And then, yeah. Just managed to hold him long enough for the rest of them to blow up the facility with both of them in it. Dead. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dead. Uh, now Guile becomes so obsessed with revenge himself that he abandons his family, which may not get to think. Um, don't recommend it. <laughs> don't recommend Don't recommend it. it. Don't do it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Tried it, it's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do eventually beat him, your wife and daughter will come back to you. Right. Uh, Mike Bison and his corrupted Ryu fight the team of Ken, Sagat, and Sakura. Mm -hmm. uh, Sagat defeats Ryu mm -hmm. and helps him regain himself. So Ryu's like got the dark energy in him or the, the psycho energy in him at this point. Um, and Sagat ends up beating Ryu this time uh, and showing him like, hey, you can be good again, dude. You don't gotta be a bad guy. What an ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Verbatim. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, you don't gotta be a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered how Street Fighter characters can talk to each other. I mean, Sagat's from Thailand. Ryu's yeah. Japanese. Never yeah. been and, how do they communicate? and they've all taken a lot of punches to the head. Yeah. <laughs> they communicate with punches. Yeah. yeah. How do they communicate to people with yeah. the same language? Yeah. Yeah. They talk Morse code, but with punches. <laughs> <laughs> they all know Morse code. SOS yeah. is like yeah. nine shots nine for the shots, face. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's, uh, it's three punches, three kicks, three punches. Yeah. We, we didn't actually explain Sakura that well. Sakura being with Ken to face off against yeah. Bison. Sakura is a um, Japanese schoolgirl. Um, I think maybe then Canon Y sixteen years old unless he's ever aged yeah. past that. Um, obsessed with Ryu. Yeah. Since he beat Sagat in the tournament. No one really knows that he kind of cheap shot at him. Yeah. yeah. He just he beat him, right? So yeah. he's the guy that beat Sagat, Sagat was the strongest man in the world. Uh so Sagat, Sakura just was obsessed with him and was constantly hunting him down, wanting to meet him, and this was the first time she met him was him being possessed. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, kind of sad, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you see, ne never meet your heroes is yeah. the expression, I believe. Also, storyline-wise, main reason, main reason why I don't like the Alpha series is because Ryu was just tortured the entire time. Yeah. He yeah, yeah, played yeah. up the yeah. him cheap shotting to God. That's it. Yeah. yeah. He was a, he's an anti-hero, right? Yeah. yeah. And who do you main mean? usually? It is Ryu, right? In most games? It's Ryu, yeah. yeah. I always start off with Ryu. Just, he's always familiar. He, he plays it exactly the same way every single game. Every single game. He's, he's got, got it, right? Yeah. That, a character that iconic. Yeah. Yeah. For the Street Fighter fans who are out there, what rank are you in Street Fighter V? Oh, super put them on super gold. Super uh, gold. So what that means is that there's uh, ranks from rookie to uh, bronze, super bronze, ultra bronze, uh, silver, super silver, ultra silver, so on with gold, so on with uh, diamond, diamond, and I think platinum, and then master. Okay. Um, but basically anybody who is diamond level is worthy to compete in tournaments right now. Wow. Okay. Um, there are people who have won uh, major Capcom Pro Tour events just being diamond. Oh yeah. Which is the league above where I'm at now. Okay. Well, I, so you're up there. Yeah. I hear there's a lot of um, well the, uh, to go back to frames again, which I don't think we can have a Street Fighter episode without talking a whole bunch about frames, right? <laughs> but that was one of the big the big reasons why uh, adding more frames that you can counter in in Street Fighter V was heavily criticized because it enables uh, lower tier players to Absolutely. land these counters and these combos more often. Yeah. So um, I think that that was the main criticism last year uh, because you'd see people like uh, some famous people like Daigo, uh, Tokido, um, just not winning every single time. Yeah. Like they win Street Fighter Four days and they blame it on that, right? So when yeah. 
basically the input lag in Super Verify, I'm about to go into a very nerdy discussion right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nerdy podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the input lag in Super Verify is something like four milliseconds. Okay. So you hit a button and then four milliseconds later your character moves. Yeah, which is forever. This <laughs> is forever <laughs> in a fighting game and it's meant to sort of add weight. Yeah. Because if you throw a punch and it feels like it's a, there's a delay, it's not like it snaps, adds yeah. weight, right? So shooting games have used this for Killzone series is yeah, a yeah. big user of that to make you, you know, feel grounded and heavy. You yeah, see yeah, a lot, yeah. in a lot of games, God of War. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, but it, of course, in a fighting game like this, they said that's way too much. I actually started off as eight milliseconds. Actually, oh, yeah? Like four. Um, eight milliseconds is a long time. So, <laughs> basically, the problem is, let's say, um, if someone dashes at you in another Street Fighter game, and you see it coming, you can throw out a kick to intercept the dash. Yeah. In this game, someone dashes at you, but even if you see it and you press a button, it may not come that's out it. in time because of the input that's lag it. of the dash. And the kick. Well, that's it. They maybe, maybe it before it happened. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So like now it's all about anticipating, which now the pro characters are finally figuring out. Yeah. Okay. Tokido One Evo, he's a 39 year old, 38 year old Street Fighter player. So, okay. Wow. I've uh, been in there for a while. Well, you'd think Daigo would really excel in this this <laughs> new in this new realm of Street Fighter. One would think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like the same. Like yeah. the reaction time. Yeah, that's it. We all age. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah. Daigo, yeah. I think he's uh, slightly older than me. He's, uh, and his um, oof, he's mid 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 thirties at this point. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, because of the button lag, you see people actually coming in and, and uh, competing as players with that crazy reaction time. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. um, Mind you, I'm saying this all, and you guys maybe might feel that Street Fighter is really slow. It's very fast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't really feel that unless you're no, yeah. a real funny game. I mean, we say like four milliseconds is a long time, but it's like yeah. that's that's gaming for you. Like, I used to play a lot of MOBAs, and like four milliseconds on your ping is not a big difference. Uh. Like, you would need to have like. Eight, like a, a 30 ping difference, that's a big ping. Yeah, I've seen Ethan play games where he's playing like a half second behind his yeah, inputs yeah, in his it. old apartment, and it was so like, bad. Five, I had like five, yeah, mine would spike to like 500 ms ping Whoa. sometimes. <laughs> playing a freaking mobile like that, dude. And like, I was like, I was like, I was decent, you know, but like, you get used to the input lag. Oh, okay. It's like you said, you know, so it's like, I would, I would typically sit at my old place, I sat at about 140, 150. Which is not so bad. It's mm. a, like a tenth and a half of a second for all your inputs or whatever. But yeah, I wonder if MOBAs have this feature because uh, most fighting games now new now uh, they they have this feature where in training mode you can adjust your input lag to re- like sort of oh like, yeah sort of oh. be as if you're playing online. You can be like have like you can uh, oh, this sort of really cool. replicate a one bar, a two bar, or a three bar, a five bar. Uh, yeah, okay, that's amazing. Well. So uh, I only play locally, so like um, yeah. uh, you know I don't really have that, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, or if I do play online, I make sure it's like very regional within 10 kilometers. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do they have that setting that you can set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah you wow. can have like you search the whole world. You can search only in the same country. You can like bring it down. Oh, wow. Wow. that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really in cool. Counter Strike, when I moved from outside the city to the city, um, with not improving my skills at all, just getting used to a shorter input lag, I moved up from like mid silver to like high gold, just Whoa. because my internet was better and I could see the guy shoot him quicker. Yeah, like, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just goes to show you though. Uh, how important uh, it, uh, input lag is in fighting games uh, yeah. compared to other games. Because, like, me, I was, like, complaining about, like, a quarter of a second. And it's, like, you, it's, like, one two hundredth of a second. Yeah. That's, like, that's a big deal, you know what I mean? It is. <laughs> that's it, yeah. So, um, well, yeah, it's like you say, it's just, I mean, getting, it's all combo-based, right? So, that's yeah. it. And, like you said, you can kind of react within your combos. So, it's, like, if you have a, let's say you have, like, 12... 12 buttons to press, right? And you're adding like five milliseconds on each of those 12 yeah. buttons. We're already at like 60 milliseconds behind exactly. where you would be. It right? must be so. tough for an online competitive player to adapt to a tournament setting where it's all, um, there's like almost no lag. It's all no lag, so yeah, 100%. Thing, but. but what they yeah. do is uh, like a month before the tournament comes up, they stop playing online. Okay. They yeah. only play locally. They have training partners. They would have um, to, yeah. Yeah, even to the point where like, uh, I know Japanese players, they have, they're all friends, like, largely they're all friends with each other. Yeah. And before they come to Los Angeles or Las Vegas rather for Evo, they all get together and they all pick a different character and they okay. emulate how the U.S. players play. It. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. So wow. in although a U.S. player did win the Capcom Pro Tour, uh, Knuckle Dew, a Guile player. Okay. Um, they they actually gave a uh, Guile and Knuckle Dew uniform as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. In the game. <laughs> That's cool. Um, he lost at Evo. Uh, the U.S. has not won Evo I think since the '90s. Oh wow. It is a, and this year, um, I know you guys should really if you're even if you're not into fighting games, uh, check out this year's Evo that just passed less than a month ago. Uh, Tokido, who came from the losers bracket, meaning he had to win six games, yeah. versus Punk, an 18-year-old kid who took oh, the Street Fighting Street some, Fighter by storm, the best player in the world. Some 18-year-old Punk. Yeah, some like, he, like, he bags people. This like, guy, he's, like, he's a trash guy. He, yeah. he, like he, he was beating players who had been playing since was born. Tokido's been playing since yeah, yeah. was born. Yeah, yeah. Beating everyone up until the finals. And just like shaking his head like you guys are nothing, you guys are nothing. Yeah, yeah. Teabagging, taunting, yeah, yeah. doing everything. <laughs> like really getting under their skin. So check that match out. It is 
an epic match. It ended in last. tears on one end or the other. Yeah, yeah, spoilers, yeah. 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 I'm actually, yeah. don't spoil it for me. I'm actually <laughs> keen to watch this out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we were talking about Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It's, you see how it's easy to tangent, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, through willpower, Ryu conquers Bison's influence. Uh, forces out all the negative energies back into Bison's, uh, blowing him to smithereens, eh, is what I wrote down. Um, Ryu and Sagat agree they'll figure out who's the best another day. They decide not to fight. Uh, unbeknownst to them, Bison's soul survives classic Bison's and possesses the body of Rose. So uh, he possesses his good half. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Yang wins over the Yin, I guess. Not cool, Bison. Not cool, Bison. Bison, you can't, like, you can't possess people, man. It's just not good. Uh, Shadaloo scientists then clone him a new body. So like you said earlier, he's constantly changing mm -hmm. bodies and all that stuff. So let's talk about the Shadaloo a bit. Uh, originally called the Shadow Law. Uh, it's thought they're called the Shadaloo because of a mispronunciation from Japan, basically. Uh, <laughs> so they, they're, they're the Shadow Law uh, or Shadow Roo. Like the various suits and, yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was the barrier suit. <laughs> uh, so the Shadow Loo is a very powerful and deadly criminal organization responsible for dealing biochemical drugs and arms within the Street Fighter universe, also the Final Fight universe. Uh, the four kings are the top-ranking members of the Shadow Loo, uh, effectively the head members. Who are they, Ethan? Uh, we got M. Bison. We had Sagat. Uh, we have Fang, uh, who comes in four, I think. Fang, yeah. Oh, Fung, he's pronounced. Yeah, oh. F dot A dot N dot G. You'd think it was oh. pronounced Fang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we have Vega, uh, known as Balrog in Japan. And we have Balrog, known as um, Boxer. So Fung, <laughs> Fung only Fung. joins the organization in Street Fighter 5. 5, okay. Yeah, sorry. So there's, there's those four, uh, Boxer, Ninja, um, Sagat, and you, Bison. U.S. Vega is uh, Assassin or Dictator? U.S. Vega is the Assassin. Okay, U.S. Assassin. Vega is the good, Assassin. Good, good. The right. Spanish Matador. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so the name is based on Buddhist context of the Four Heavenly Kings. A little fun fact for you. Chitenu. That's cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Capcom localized the names as Grandmasters. Uh, originally, we seen Street Fighter 2. Did they? I don't remember that. Not, not Chitenu. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that Chitenu would have gone over well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this this entire faction of Shadow League is obviously the bad guys in the game, uh, unless you consider like a character like Akuma, who's kind of like his own bad guy. Mm -hmm. He's like a rogue, rogue bad guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I like that he, he like Ken or Rio go on the island. Like I wouldn't expect that from. So him. we're gonna get in Street Fighter Two, but you're gonna see like what kind of bad guy Akuma is. Okay, yeah. okay. So Super Street Fighter Two Turbo. Mm. Is that the most recent release of Street Fighter? Ultra Street Fighter Two is the most recent for Switch for Nintendo Switch is the most. Oh, recent. there's a new one on Switch. Okay. Two new characters. Two new characters. Okay. 2017. Wow. So yeah. how many characters are there? God, I don't know. Total in the game now. <laughs> uh, a lot. A yeah. lot. Okay. Because yeah. originally there was. Eight or twelve? Eight? Yeah, eight. eight and Street Fighter Two, original was eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eight, eight countries, eight people. You don't see like turbo just being added on the end of something to show that it's new anymore. Like maybe I'll explain why. Like you don't see like the iPhone six turbo. Right. Like Turbo was necessary because a lot of people felt Street Fighter uh, two was slow compared to Street Fighter One. Okay. So oh, all yeah. they did with Turbo was they added a couple of characters and turned the speed up. Oh okay. yeah. That's it. That's yeah. Turbo. That's all right. right. And then Super is their naming convention when they're adding more things. Yeah, so okay. Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 4. Okay. Uh, or new characters, new moves. And then new Ultra characters. eventually. Which yeah, is Ultra is the more. ultimate. This is the last one. That's the last one. <laughs> yeah. so, so they claim. So they claim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, until they come out with S-Class. Ultra Street Fighter 2 Turbo S-Class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mega Street Fighter 4. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's Five. very much a Japanese naming convention Absolutely. thing. Like, yeah. uh, like you say, you wouldn't see it on the iPhone because, I mean, it's a uh, it's a very American thing. I don't know. Maybe Samsung in Japan, it has like the Super Samsung Galaxy. I don't know. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it Sounds wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if I did. Speaking of Japanese quirks, um, Street Fighter, although I didn't see it as a kid, especially Street Fighter 2 since that was the first one I played, mm -hmm. um, you start to see how Japanese this game is. Something in Japan that they do about other cultures and about themselves is they sort of like look at what is popular in another place mm -hmm. and not assume that everyone likes that, but if they're going to make an American, he's going to be Air Force, have American tattoos, yeah. have a buzz cut, <laughs> yeah. because that is their experience with most American people. Or he's going to be a boxer who yells only in America. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, that would be... Or, or right. he's going to be an Indian guy who rides an elephant. And yeah. does yoga, breeze fire. And honestly, Dalsim, who is a Street Fighter 2, we yeah. talk about here, is uh, his interest in Street Fighter 5, they have like blood type, height, weight, interest. So oh, yeah. yoga and curry 
Oh um, my god. Very much the stereotype. You know, which, so. which, who can honestly say that their interest is curry? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I could, honestly. Yeah, I, yeah, I like curry. I like curry, but uh, I'm not right. going to sit at home and think about curry for two hours. That really. is the same. Yeah. You know, the characters that they make are largely caricatures, caricatures of where yeah, they come yeah. from, including yeah. their own. They have a sumo wrestler who eats yeah. like fish. And yeah, that's it. Karate Man Ryu, Silent Fujito. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and I mean, uh, obviously we're Mexican. We're yeah. from Mexico. We're recording in Mexico right now. Hola. Hola. <laughs> and um, <laughs> with with our northern neighbors, the United States, like there's that's a hotbed for racial tension that just doesn't exist in the Eastern world. Like that, like there's obviously racial tension in Japan for a lot of different things, yeah. uh, especially between different Eastern countries. You know, like Korea and Japan, and, uh, India, and Japan. India, India, Japan, everywhere in Japan, China and Japan, yeah. <laughs> Southeast Asia, yeah. Japan. Nandy brought this up to me at work before, but like if I, as a white person, went to Japan and sat down to someone, uh, like next to someone on the bus, they would get up and leave yeah. because there's like racism for in them. almost anywhere except for Tokyo. It what? could happen in Tokyo, especially, but in certain areas, like Roppongi's like half white people anyway, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But I remember sitting down on a bus in Chiba and having two ladies just immediately yeah. eject. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> me not minding so much. Uh, yeah. and of course, a friend, a friend of mine came. Uh, he did it too, and they also got up. Uh, oh, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was interesting. Uh, yeah. But of course, it's like, you know, it's a very homogenous 99% Japanese place. Wow. I mean, if I had sat next to you on a bus, or if you had sat next to me on a bus, I probably would have got <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> if I sat next to me on a bus. 50 <laughs> 50. <laughs> <laughs> So, Super Street Fighter, or Ultra Street Fighter 2. Mm. Uh, Bison's back in charge, and he holds a World Warrior Tournament, inviting the greatest fighters from around the world. So it's like literally this, this I love that they retconned Bison into the uh, Super Street Fighter Alpha games doing all these terrible things. Because now it's just like, he holds a tournament, and everyone's like, yeah, we'll go to your tournament, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when you kidnap, torture me, pump me full of your, your psycho energy. Yeah, that's like, well, I'll come to your barbecue. Awesome. Like, yeah. uh, no more kidnapping this time. Yeah. Just, if you win the fight, don't key bag me again. That's it. Uh, well, if he's in the tournament, then I guess everyone wants to go beat yeah, him up. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, yeah. this is Street Fighter 2. Technically his first appearance, but canonically, is fourth game. Mm. New body, his body was destroyed. He is much taller now. Yeah. Thinner, more lean looking guy, very serious face, whereas yeah. like he had a very caricature, angry, big, bulky person before. Which yeah. which actually shows some uh, uh, foresight of thought on Capcom's behalf. Like you said, the Alpha games came out in kind of rapid succession for uh, Street Fighter games. Actually, I think you might have said that to me when the mics were off. But yeah. Um, yeah. anyway, they, they came out in fairly rapid succession compared to other Street Fighter games. Often Street Fighter games will have like a four to ten year gap between them, uh, whereas these ones were kind of like over three or four years, all three games came out. And uh, obviously, Street Fighter Alpha 3 was when Bison was destroyed and when they established that he could inhabit new bodies. And in the first Street Fighter Alpha, they made him the short, stocky guy. So it's interesting to think, they maybe did they have the foresight of thought to say, like, he's going to die in the third one? And be re- and be- Ab- absolutely. No, it was just like, a, a, they just fucked it up. And then by the time they got to the third one, they're like, let's kill him. We'll have him inhabit a new body. As I said before, I don't know if it's in the podcast or on the break, but Super Alpha is a very cartoony series. Yeah. So, of course, short, stocky, big, monster-looking yeah, bison yeah. would fit the art style better, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. But, of course, it gives them a reason to, to, to change how we look. Yeah, that's yeah. it. No, that's, they get to the third, the third one, they're like, it's Street Fighter 2 that comes next. He's big and tall. <laughs> How do we make him big and tall? <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, everyone does decide to uh, to come to this tournament. Sure. Meanwhile, Bison is planning on using the combatants as brainwashed soldiers in his plan for world domination. Go figure. <laughs> He's Seriously. also attempting to draw Akuma out of hiding so he can experiment on him. Oh, don't recommend that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to end well for him, actually. Uh, so this does prove to be his undoing. Uh, despite being the most popular entry in the franchise, little is known about what actually goes down. Who wins the tournament? You don't really know, because depending on who you play, that's who wins the tournament. Uh, all that is known is that Akuma attacks Bison and seemingly kills him for good with his raging demon attack, as yeah. we mentioned before, which yeah. literally kills him. What does that look like? So let me, let me talk about the raging yeah. demon. Yeah. Aside from the most recent entry, which you actually see what happens in the raging demon, mm-hmm. the raging demon is an attack where he teleports towards you, grabs you. You can obviously jump over it. But if he grabs you, the screen turns black, and you just see a bunch of little white sparks flying everywhere, then your character's lying on the ground. Okay. If he kills you with that move, his sign, which is the ten sign, the heaven sign in uh, kanji in Japanese, appears with a big 
like fireworks everywhere and everything, and then he just keeps standing with his back turned, and the big sign appears on his back lighting up. Uh, it's the most badass uh, move. That gave me chills, man. Yeah. <laughs> <ever. laughs> uh, wow. And uh, in the newest iteration of it, he teleports towards you, you actually see what he does to the person, which is like a, this is a rapid series of punches okay. teleporting all okay. over. Essentially, this move attacks your soul. Oh, yeah. It doesn't Ooh. just kill your body, it attacks your soul, rips your soul out, and it just demolishes you. It's a cheese locker, basically. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> wow. So, did you prefer it? Like, you can see it now, what he does. Do you prefer being able to see it, or did you kind of like it with the, the black screen and the white flashes? Just uh, from you describing it, it sounds like I would have liked the black screen and the yeah, white flashes. Yeah, given the lore behind the movie, I'd like it. to not see it. Yeah, that's it. But mind you, the Street Fighter Five Raging Demon, which is where you see what happens, it's bad. It's still really good. It's really cool. That, that is good. Um, yeah. um, and I, I will say... I haven't, I haven't actually seen the move, but that sounds so much more appealing to me than just, like, the gore fest that is Mortal Kombat. Absolutely. Like, sure, yeah. the finishers are cool or whatever, but it's like, man, I just, yep. I'm not a big fan of gore, it's like, I just don't need to see yeah. it. It's a cartoonish point. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But he said he, he swoops in, basically, uh, if, so, what happens, why the reason why he was so, this move is a very secret move, and the reason why uh, Akuma was a very secret character was because he wasn't, he is. Like, he's, you don't, you can't pick him. Yeah. You just, and you can in many console versions, but in the arcade, if you do a certain progression of events. If you get four perfects or something like that, a certain number of scores, a certain number of blocks or whatever, then right before you're about to fight Bison and beat the game, screen turns dark, Akuma swoops in and kills Bison. Whoa. Oh, yeah. And then you have to fight him. He's the last boss. Oh, that All is so right. cool. So oh, essentially, he is a palette swap of Ryu, just like Ken is, with yeah. a dark mm-hmm. uniform uh, rope instead of a, a belt and okay. sandals instead of bare feet. Okay. Um, he's got wild hair. Yeah, he's got the shaggy mane too. But he could basically do everything they could do but chain all of his moves together. So his hurricane kick can chain into his uppercut. He can jump in the air and shoot a Hadouken. Okay. He Whoa. can teleport back and forth. He is like, just Ryu and Ken combined and on steroids. And on steroids. Uh, this yeah, makes so me excited. Yeah. 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 So if, on the shoot suit. Yeah. yeah, if I have a PS4 and a PC, what Street Fighter games do I have access to? You have access to Super Ultra Street Fighter 4, the current version of Street Fighter 5. Yeah. Um, as well, I believe you can play Street Fighter 3 online. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Maybe, that may be also a lot So 5 seems too. like the best bet yeah, if someone wants to get into the Jumping series. on 5 is the most okay. uh, uh, I mean, friendly. Send, okay. send Capcom 10 bucks in an envelope and yeah. just download an emulator. <laughs> <laughs> so 11-year-old Nandi, uh, not... Owning a console at home, yeah. Uh, but going to the arcades to play, uh, I jumped in there and I wanted to. I, I had a piece of paper uh, printed out from my yeah, Mac yeah. computer about uh, how to unlock Akuma, and I, I don't think I spent like I must have spent like at least like twenty five dollars yeah, yeah. <laughs> just repeating the story mode because everyone's yeah, yeah. playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. This is in the early nineties too. Yeah. Yep, and I do it. Yeah, yeah. And he swoops in. And I ended up losing the match because I ran to get my brother. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. freaked out. You're like, I <laughs> <laughs> the key. Yeah. Yeah. So I lost the first round. Tried my best the second round. I actually got demolished. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it's like, I, know, I was a, re- a real veteran at this. I just didn't know how to fight a Kuma. That, well, that's it. But just seeing him swoop in, annihilate Bison, and Bison have a cape over his head, um, dead. Yeah. Okay. Um, and canonically, I believe that's how Bison dies. That, in is, that, game. that is how Bison dies. In that game. Wow. That body's destroyed after that. Um, yeah, so... Like we said, uh, the ending is gonna gonna differ based on on who wins the tournament. And now comes uh, my test for you. When you come home, play. Oh. I'm gonna have you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna name you a character. I'm gonna go through the original. Yeah, he's eight. so kind just to come on the podcast and then yeah. we drill it. We come on blast. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is a cutting a cutting podcast. Yeah. How, the Howard Stern of video game podcasts right here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. I'm never listening to Howard Stern. Yeah. Uh, that's not true. Uh, so I'm going to name you uh, some of the original eight, and you're going to tell me if you can remember what their ending is. Uh, oh, just no. the, the cutscene at the end. <laughs> oh, no, this is my weakest part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's start Let's start with Ryu. That, that's your main, right? All right, so what game are we talking about? Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2? You, you beat Bison. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a cutscene at the end. Okay. Do you remember the cutscene? Yeah, um, so Ryu basically has a sexy ending in every game. He just uh, is walking out on down the street yeah. with, like, you know, the... Trees going by, talking about what it is to be a warrior, yeah. continuing on his path to be yeah. uh, the best fighter. That's why in For Honor, whenever you kill someone, you walk away slowly from them <laughs> yeah, every yeah, single yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because Street Fighter, Street Fighter is just a For Honor ripoff. Yeah, no. so, <laughs> uh, just his roots. Yeah, yeah. I do Street Fighter 4 and 5, uh, well, although 5 is an arcade version. Uh, 4, he has a very much same ending. A waterfall, I'll shoot a Hadouken at the waterfall. <laughs> Continues yeah. to be on his path, raging, yeah. raging against the waterfall. Like the yeah. classic trope, man versus nature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ryu is Karate Man. He has the same ending. Literally, there's like four versions of Street Fighter Four, and he has the same goddamn ending. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, Ryu, Ryu's just shown walking away, and he says he doesn't need the celebration. And you see a picture of uh, Mike Bison and Sagat standing on the podium in second and third place, okay. respectively, waiting for Ryu to show up, but he never shows up. He's just yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, how about E Honda, who is the oh, Japanese no. stereotype? Yeah, so E Honda is a sumo wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very, um, you know, he's got the red face paint on. Very stereotypically yeah. Japanese. Um, he got a blue open robe. His belly's hanging out. That's it. His, uh, he's actually very easy to use. He just mash the punch button and starts slapping the guy. Like yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, so e Honda's ending. I actually don't even know his motivation. He's such a minor character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna say that he ends up going back to Japan and opens up a sushi restaurant. Uh, pretty close. <laughs> he had a dojo already, <laughs> and he goes back to his dojo. He tells him the reason he won was to show them that if you train hard, you could win. And the, the ending is literally him there with a bowl of nabe, just oh. just like chowing down. <laughs> no problem. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Thing. <laughs> you pretty much have. <laughs> now, if Vega, mm. the assassin, won the tournament, what do you think he would spend his time doing? Oh, so Vega. How do you think he would celebrate? Vega. So, you know, I said the movies aren't canon, right? But yeah. uh, Street Fighter Two, the animated movie, has it heavily features Vega. Vega is actually one of the main antagonists in there. He's a horrible fight with Chun Li, where he sneaks into her apartment and. Uh, Ooh. Like almost sexually assaults her, and uh, yeah, this is a very M rated movie. Off of those vibes. Oh yeah, uh, very very aggressive fight. She ends up winning the fight. Um, Good. So Vega is a, a pervert. He is a very angry person. Very uh, you know he thinks about beauty. He thinks he's beautiful. Uh, very and, and he's a killer. So I'm gonna say Vega goes back to Spain, still in Shadowloo, and he is. Seeking out more people to kill, he ends up like jumping out of something trying to kill someone. Uh, pretty close. Yeah, I mean, you almost had it on the nose. He, after the tournament, he goes to his mansion and like this is this is a quote from the game: praises himself on his victory and beauty. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the game says perhaps he's the world's greatest narcissist. Yeah. So he literally goes back yeah. to his house, looks at himself in the mirror, and says, "You're so beautiful. That's Good it. job." Yeah, for someone who hasn't seen it, you got to <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It. So uh, I guess it makes sense to go to Chun Li next. Hmm. After she won the tournament and, and defeated Bison, what do you think she would do? Now this is this is where we we branch off of it. So I know Chen Li's story very well. Yeah. Chen Li is a character that her canon matters. Mm-hmm. Um, Chen Li, of course, trying to avenge her father's death and or uh, investigate her father's death. She's sure that Bison did it, and Bison does admit to doing it yeah. at some point. He does um, in the in the the final cutscene. Which so I better. guess this basically, and as someone who never used Chen Li, like I, mean, I, never, I don't think I've ever seen her ending. Um, something tells me they wouldn't make her ending canon. Uh, they would want to actually give her some closure. So I think that she ultimately kills Bison in, Bison, in the second version, even though that's not what happened in her ending, mm. and ends at her father's grave. Father's grave? There we go. Wow, that's man! Yeah. That's amazing! Uh, she's basically there. She's she's talking to him, and she says, like, oh, now you've been avenged. Uh, you'll never be able to, wow. to do okay. these, these terrible things. And, like, this may sound like I may... I swear to God, <laughs> I've never been seen by a Yeah, you yeah. would have to go and spend your $20. Yeah, yeah. 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 good at this yeah. character. I have no time to do two characters. Yeah, exactly. um, Yeah, so you, you, beat, you beat the whole game, and then you actually... Activate a and you're like, damn it, wrong <laughs> ending. <laughs> but, uh, but the fun, the fun thing about Chun Li is at the end of her cutscene, it gives you a choice uh, for her. Like you, you get to make it, oh. you get to choose between two things, and it says, "What are you going to do? Are you going to go? Are you going to go on being an exciting single girl, oh, or no. continue being a detective?" Oh, <laughs> <All right>. so, <laughs> can I can I frame this as someone who lives in Japan? Yeah. <laughs> so currently, right now, Japan is has a very small women's movement. It's going really well. Mm. Uh, women are in the workforce, uh, but they have a very culturally ingrained gender role. Yeah. So it's not very uncommon for a woman to finish her BA, uh, do a master's degree, do a PhD, and then get married and not want to work. Yeah. So like become a become a family woman, have yeah, kids, yeah. settle down. And it's very appealing to both Japanese men and Japanese women. A lot That's of I spoke to a lot of women I taught in Japan. I did have that as well. So I guess they of course throw that in there. That's uh, it. You can have a career or you can be single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Get married or have fulfillment. Who knows? Can I both? What yeah. country has stay-at-home dads? Because I want to go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like by choice. You don't have to. Yeah. It'd be nice. Yeah. Chun Li is also the. I'd be uh, I'd be down with it if it was forced. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I want to get a job, but I'm not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Chen Li is uh, the very quintessential uh, among many other characters, quintessential uh, Chinese stereotype. Yeah. Okay. In family, you know, very high pitched voice, voice, which is what uh, Japanese people assume of, Jap- of Chinese women. Yeah. Uh, two little balls on her head. Uh, yeah. Like uh, the buns. Yeah. You know, uh, very high pitched laugh with the V. Um, yeah. <laughs> the P sign. sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Bl- <laughs> what, what do you think Blanca would would do- what do you think would happen to Blanca after? His final fight. This is what does Blanca look like? So again? Blanca is I maybe you could if you research this. I don't actually know why he's like this, but he has green fur all over his body. <laughs> he's got prehensile, uh, not prehensile, but like a fangs. yeah, he's got fangs. Um, no tail, but he's got like you know red uh, hair. They're, they're pronounced fangs. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just interject real quick. Yeah. I don't know why he's like this, but I'm going to like when I'm done telling you his ending, mm-hmm. you're gonna have more questions wondering why he's like this. <laughs> I will <laughs> ask them. Uh, Blanca's mom, also, which is a very big part of the canon, is yeah. a human. Yeah. So she's a normal Brazilian woman. Okay, maybe you won't have questions. Okay. <laughs> that was, yeah, I, I know this part. So Blanca's actually, he can produce electricity from his body. So one of his moves, why he's very noob friendly, is you mash the punch button. The stronger the punch button you press, the faster you have to mash it. But when you do, he bends down on the ground and becomes electric. Okay. And if you just touch him, you lose like a quarter of your health. Wow. Um, so, like, characters who can't shoot fireballs have a very difficult time fighting. Okay. Um, anyway. So his ending, I'm gonna say, uh, 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 Blanca. Blanca is uh, like Dan. He's kind of a, a, a funny character. Yeah. Um, his most of his endings I've seen in other games have been very related to eating pineapples and just jumping around and having fun with his mom and be living in the jungle. So I'd imagine it's a combination of seeing his mom again, maybe, and living in the jungles, Brazil, swinging around. Uh, I know in one of the endings he ends up joining Dan's dojo. Oh I mean, yeah. I, I don't think that's in. She's no, no. Uh, he, this is actually the end of Street Fighter Two is when he meets his mom. Oh, uh, okay. He wins the tournament, and a woman comes out of the crowd and says, wait, are you my son? <laughs> and he's like, uh, why would I be your son? Yeah. And she's like, no, wait, but you're wearing a bracelet on your ankle. I gave my son that bracelet on his birthday right. before yeah. he, his plane crashed. Giving birth to a green furry person wouldn't be enough. It's yeah. the bracelet. Yeah, the bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, it's not racist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First thing to be yeah. <laughs> There's lots of green furry people out there. You can't assume that every yeah, one of them knows each other. Uh, <laughs> Monica, the green guy. The green guy. Yeah. yeah come on. It is a big green. Yeah. Uh, okay. Blanca, Blanca, the artist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, yeah, that makes sense because the majority of story modes that I played in Street Fighter were not Street Fighter 2. Yeah. So he, his mom was very ingrained in the other endings. Do you know Blanca's real name? I'm going to say so. So. Uh, <laughs> in, let me let me blow your mind here. Charlie, which we mentioned earlier on yes. in the Alpha series, Alpha series. Uh, Guile's friend, Air Force, yes. uh, fight fought very similarly. Guile. Guile's motivation. Um, in the Van Damme Raul Julia live action movie, Charlie and Blanca were the same person. Okay. Oh yeah. Bison caught Charlie, turned him into, into Blanca. Blanca. Okay. That's how that was. Uh, okay. So I don't actually. I'm gonna just throw it out there and say his name was Charlie. No. 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 Nice. That would be good though. Good guess. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 of course, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I actually do that. <laughs> yeah, so, so it ends, the last shot is uh, Blanca hugging his mom, and the two of the, Blanca yelling mommy, and her yelling Jimmy. Jesus Christ. This <laughs> uh, is fucking serious, man. Yeah. <laughs> if Sagat won the tournament, yeah. what do you think Sagat would do? He's going to go back to Thailand. Um, he's going to quit Shadow Loop. I think no Shadow Loop involved in this. Yep. Back to Thailand, enjoy the fame and fortune of being the strongest man in the world. Yeah. No, nope. no, nope. he's going to keep training. Wow. Uh, he has he has this realization. He's like, uh, I know Ryu didn't just get lucky last time. I have to train harder. And the last shot is him doing like one finger push ups. Damn, yeah. oh, that's badass. Yeah. Dude, so far, one, one finger okay, <laughs> before I thought he was my favorite character in the series, and that seals it for me so far. Yeah. I think yeah. if I do pick up the game, that I will play. So he's yeah. the most tragic character in the series. Oh, yeah. I love him. scumbag Ryu. Uh, <laughs> Zangief. This Zangief. is a great one too. So this is a Zang- great Zangief is a, a Russian uh, yes. wrestler. He is, uh, aside from the character that just came out of Street Fighter V, uh, Abigail, he used to be the biggest character in the game. He's a noob player, right? Yeah. Like everyone. Eight feet tall, 700 pounds of like like 1% body fat. Yeah. Like very muscular. <laughs> and got his strength from wrestling bears in Russia. Yeah, naturally. Very stereotypically. Very stereotypically. We're talking about caricatures. There's a lot of them in this game. Yeah. He is no exception. And yeah. his ending is no exception. Uh, I'm gonna say he goes back to Russia and uh, the bear wrestling. I'm not sure if that's something that came on in the Alpha series, which time wise is after, but cannot be before. Uh, but I'm gonna just throw that there and say that he went back to wrestle some bears and work in a factory and or help children. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. One of the combinations. You, you, you had you had the stereotype part right. 
Okay. But the, the actual context of it is a little bit different. He's at the tournament. Mikhail Gorbachev himself okay. flies in on a helicopter. <laughs> so the leader oh. of the USSR at the time wow. flies, in a hel- flies in on a helicopter, hops off, uh, and then it shows a picture. It shows the drawing of, of Gorbachev in front of uh, the hammer and sickle. Like in front of the USSR flag. <laughs> oh, this game, this game came out in 1991. It's important to know. And yeah. and the USSR dissolved December 26, 1991. Holy smokes! So like that year, the USSR dissolved. Right. Yeah. He shows up in front of the hang- hammer and sickle. Uh, basically says like, oh, you showed that like all Russian men are like stronger than everybody. Yeah. I'm like amazed that this game got released in the United States with this. You oh, know right. what I mean? I did not know that. At yeah, all. no, it's wow. funny. It's funny. Like funny, funny tangent. I mean, you guys would not have had this at all. No. But when I was, it's six, right? Yeah. Uh, the USSR broke up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, we were two in four months. So like, like yeah, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in school and I was looking at books, and our books hadn't taken that into account. No, so yeah, like, all our books had USSR. Yeah. Yeah. Three. I'm sure. I'm sure two decades later they took that out of <laughs> yeah. the textbooks. <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. Yeah, it's, but it's a very Japanese interpretation of what would happen. Yeah. yeah. So so Gorbachev claims this shows how strong the Soviet spirit is. And then the two of them do the Cossack dance, oh, the, where the, they cross yeah. their arms, get really low, and kick oh, their feet with a bunch of other people in the background. Yeah. 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 I, this is like... I Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> yeah. That is insane. Yeah, it's your favorite game too. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, Ken. What do, you, what do you think Ken got? So, Ken, uh, so, so Street Fighter, when they... In the 90s, when they came out, was the... The sort of time period that was. So Street Fighter came out in 1991. It was 1991 then. Yeah. Um, since then, they've actually kept it in the 90s. In the 90s. So yeah. if Street Fighter 4 took place a few years after, it would still be in the 90s. Yeah. Okay. So you do see like cassette players in Street Fighter 4. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at the time, Ken was starting a family with his wife, Eliza. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 5 rather, the kid is a boy. Like he's a boy. So I think that he went home, his wife told him that she was pregnant, uh, and... Um, maybe the kid was born? I don't think so. Not Street Fighter 3. I'm going to say the kid is pregnant. She was pregnant, ended with the pregnancy, and they're happy. But, uh, uh, it ends with the wedding. Actually. Wedding. Oh, yeah, that's, the wedding. yeah, it probably happened that night. Yeah, well, it ends, they get married. Yeah. You see uh, Ken holding her in her wedding dress in his arms. And then, they, like, for each of the endings, they have, like, they show the ending, the cutscene, mm-hmm. and then they have, like, a final frame, which yeah. is, like, a slightly higher resolution yeah. image. And the image is him like holding a bunch of boxes while she oh, runs yeah. around the mall shopping. You know what I mean? Okay. So, they they yeah. kept the sexism in there. Don't See, worry about since it. Since this is open answer, you're getting very close. I think if it was multiple choice, you would get all. Of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 This is fun. Yeah. Ken yeah. is um, Ken is for those of you, for those of you who don't know, um, Ryu is Japanese Japanese. Uh, him and Ken train together. Ken's mom is Japanese. His father is American. Yeah. He's so half- Ken is like fluently bilingual. Has blonde hair. Yeah. Um. Is uh, is half speaks both languages. Yeah. Okay. Um. Balrog, the boxer. Oof. Um. Have either of you played Killer Instincts? No. No. So they have a character in there named T J Combo. Uh, okay. Boxer, very much like Balrog. I always get them mixed up. Okay. So I was much more into that story as well yeah. at the time. So I uh, know uh, Balrog was kicked out of the boxing. Um, Era for using drugs, I think. I think so. Uh, maybe he came back. He, I know he's obsessed with money. One of his quotes is, "I got paid." Yeah. So, um, and actually, the currency in Street Fighter, uh, when he loses, he says, "My fight money," and the yeah. currency in Street Fighter is all fight money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say that he went. He um, uh, sort of like retires and ends up back in like a mansion with a bunch of money or something. That is okay. like spot on. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he literally shouts. He wins. He literally shouts only in America, a la Don King. Um, the Muhammad Ali okay, yeah, yeah. fight promoter. Only in America. Uh, he buys a gold suit, and he, like the last <laughs> shot is him lounging around with some babes and literal bags of money with dollar signs just on the couch with him. <laughs> fight money signs. Like. And fight money. Yeah. Very <laughs> stereotypical African American boxer yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Floyd <laughs> Money Mayweather. Uh, Here's an easy one for you, uh, Mike Bison. <laughs> the big bad guy. What would he do if he won? He's gonna take over the world. He's gonna uh, take over the world. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. He says, there's no one left to interfere with my scheme now, <laughs> and takes over the world, wraps it in his darkness, it says. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound good. What a guy. Yeah. Uh, Sounds kind of comfortable. It's all wrapped up in <laughs> yeah, the darkness. Exactly. <laughs> cozy, cozy it's darkness. darkness. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That yeah. eternal sleep sounds comfortable, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so dark and comfortable in yeah. here. Uh, Dalsim. Dalsim's going to go back to India, be around his children. Um, he is... Dustin never wanted money, right? He always sees, I believe he's homeless, um, and would often do shows and or fight other people. Yeah. Actually, in Street Fighter 2, his first fight is with E-Honda, 
Oh um, yeah. He actually throws the fight to speak to Ryu. He got distracted by Ryu's presence. Oh yeah. Um, I guess he goes back to India. His around children gives the money to them. Like well, it's it's pretty close. He <laughs> rides an elephant back then. Jesus yeah. Christ. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta happen. Sorry, I forgot what series this was. At the very yeah. at the very <laughs> least. They have been consistently right. doing this, right? Like everybody's had a caricature so far, yeah. so it's not like they're picking out one group, but yeah, yeah. And he rides an elephant home to India, and then he eats rice and curry with his son. Okay. And there's there's a picture of him on the wall. So he's not he's not homeless at the time, I guess, because there's a picture of him on the wall standing on the podium. I wonder. If and he they, tells his son, like that's that's your old man. Huh. I wonder if they retconned his son because that's not part of any of the other ones. Oh yeah, oh. a bunch of kids. Like he runs like an orphanage. Uh, okay, maybe it was one of them. Then I'm not sure it was. Yeah, I'm curious. I believe it. It's not gonna be. I watched all these this morning. Was, yeah. I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a good time. Uh, okay, so probably uh, after watching them all, I would say probably the 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 ending I was most interested in seeing, and uh, probably the best ending in my opinion, the Guile, hmm. the one with real motivations. What do you think his ending would have looked like? Uh, he would have killed Bison. He would have. Uh, uh, see, that's the thing. I don't know if Charlie was even involved at this point. Charlie, oh, Charlie's, dead at Charlie, Charlie's dead at this. Charlie's Charlie's dead. I don't know at this point. Okay. I don't know if that was part of the story, or if Charlie was like retconned in for Alpha. No, that's that's um, well, Charlie was retconned in for Alpha to give Guile uh, motivation. Okay. It seems like right. I feel like he rides away in a helicopter with like yeah. a flag right, right. flying behind him. <laughs> for or sure, stuff. that's part of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's that's let's say that he yeah. um, by Charlie's grave or something like that says he avenged him. Uh, he definitely back, does do that. Back at the Air Force to become a family man. Uh, you're so close. <laughs> oh. So he's there. He has Bison in his hands. And his estranged wife and daughter run up. They were at the tournament, and they beg him not to kill him, and basically say, "If you murder him, you're going to become just as bad as him." No, no, he and won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically beg him not to kill him, and then it just kind of fades to the final shot with Guile at Charlie's grave, saying, oh, wow. I, "I avenged you. I got my order wrong." Yeah, that's it. Oh, so, yeah. it's so did he did he kill Bison? Uh, I believe Bison. I don't think he did, no. Okay. I, well, I actually, no, because I, I watched it. It's definitely, like, left over your interpretation. Do you think he did? Or do yeah, you think, he did. <laughs> do you think he went back? Because his, his wife and daughter are there. His estranged wife and daughter, and they're crying, like, begging him to come home, begging him not to do it kind of thing. Right. So Maybe, yeah. It, it's one, a, of, one of Guile's winning quotes in Street Fighter 2 is, uh, you better go home and become a family man. Oh, yeah? Who he says also to the female players. Hey, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah. Chun Li, go be a family man. That's it. Do you want to be? Do you want to become uh, a single, an exciting single girl? <laughs> A detective or a family man. <laughs> it was the, the ending of Chun-Li's story. I'd rather be a single girl. Uh, naturally. We, all, we would all rather be an exciting single girl. It sounds so exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was probably my favorite of the ending. It's so interesting to think that like Street Fighter 2 obviously came out before the Alpha series. So this ending where he says, like, do you remember, like, he's saying to, to Bison, he's like, do you remember Charlie? Wow. And, and Bison says to him, like, yeah, I do remember Charlie. You're not, like, the, the wimp that you were back then, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's... Yeah, I, I really like what they did. At least this storyline to retcon it, they they, they did a really good. I will say they retconned a lot, but all the retcons have been consistently good. Right. Like they've been like, okay, you guys make good choices. I don't know why you can just make this choice to begin with, but, but at least you're doing the right thing now. I'm sure there'll be a Lord Boys episode in the future, but it seems like the retcons in Street Fighter are very similar to the retcons in Metal Gear. Very good choices. Yeah, that's it to make. Mm. Um, I will say that Bison, Bison and Guile had their most um, like iconic fight in the live action movie. With Jean Claude Van Damme and Raul Julia. What a swan song for Raul Julia. He died right after that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the, I don't know if you guys can see the Addams Family. Yeah. yeah. It's the father. Oh, okay. He played Bison in the, okay. in the movie. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, this was just like, and in the end of the movie, it's dedicated to Raul Julia. He died like literally days after it, oh, wow. uh, it, uh, it was filmed. So, uh, that he was, the movie was terribly acted. It was awful, whatever, but it had like very iconic lines from him. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I remember saying to him, said, him saying to Chun Li was, uh, you know, the day I killed your father was uh, the most momentous moment of your life. And for me, it was a Tuesday. Oh. Like, you know, like a very, like, oh, yeah. yeah. So I really hope they kind of incorporated some of those lines into yeah. that. But they won't. Well, I mean, in Street Fighter 2, it sounds like they incorporated that into the movie from Street Fighter 2 because there was very much a dialogue between chun Li and, and Bison and her ending, obviously, where he was like, oh, your father was weak, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. like, he, he was nothing to me. Um, just goading her, like, on, yeah. when he's faced with the prospect of death. So. chun Li's my least favorite character in the series. I just find her like very uninteresting, very. Um, I find her motivation kind of weird. Weird. Like I mean, in terms of like, um, like, like she's not just sort of related to like that's not, not just about her father, right? Yeah. If she was, 
I guess it's not true. Yeah, she does team up with, uh, well, we'll get into it later, but she does team up with Kyle a little bit. I feel like her choices could have been better. She spends a lot of time with Ryu and Ken who just wander the world fighting. Yeah. She doesn't really focus on avenging her. She never ultimately never does. Yeah. So. I, I, I could see that, though. Like, if something tragic happens to you, maybe you don't want mm-hmm. to just deal with it right away and just roaming around and fighting, getting that energy That's out. Maybe it. it's not so much her motivations, but she's, yeah. she is treated as a bit of a punchy bag in the series. But, like, yeah. the new character comes along, beats up Chun Li. Then loses. Yeah. New character comes along, beats up Chun Li, then loses. Yeah, that's yeah. too bad. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. The strongest woman in the world yeah, gets much. beaten by every guy. <laughs> by literally, literally every, also every woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Ultra Street Fighter Four. Is that the iteration we're on? That is the most recent one. Yeah. Okay. So, two thousand fifteen, I want to say. Wow. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, Street Fighter Four does come out. Um, does come out after Street Fighter Three, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, but it does come before in the story. So Ultra means more characters, but same game speed. Capcom lexicon, Ultra means last version. Last version, okay. So okay. they made Ultra Street Fighter 4, and they actually just made Ultra Street Fighter 2. Okay. So oh, Ultra yeah. Switch, yeah. They Ultra made, means they're done. So they okay. made Ultra Street Fighter 2 after Ultra Street Fighter 4? Correct. Oh, yeah. wow. There you go. Uh, I guess I guess we know which one's more popular. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and this this and 2 are your favorites. You yeah. yeah. They're also they're also the most popular. They sold the, I think they both sold 10 million units each or something like that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Very popular games. Street Fighter 5 must be on track to beat that, though? No. No? It's the, um, the seventh selling, highest selling PS4 game? Yep. Right. And also, it's a PS4 exclusive. So, oh, is it exclusive? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's PS4 realize. PC as well, and it's on Xbox. Okay. Or Switch. Um, Sony helped fund it. So it's actually not doing so well. It's start, starting to recover, starting to get the user base back. I mean, yeah, exclusives are, are never going to do well in that regard. Your background is mostly Sony, right? Like you're a, a uh, PlayStation fan? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I usually, uh, of course, I was a big Nintendo guy, but when PlayStation came out, I moved over there. So I do play Street Fighter 5 on PlayStation. All okay. the other Street Fighters on PlayStation as well. Yeah. You, but you have... Um, Gamepad. For yeah. Game. yeah. Yeah, I have a fighting stick. Yeah. yeah. Have you, uh, like, are there any uh, top level Street Fighter players that, don't, that play with a controller? Yep. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yep. Uh, offhand, Luffy, who won Evo Evolution in 2014, I believe. Okay. Plays with a controller, plays with the PlayStation 1 controller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without, without the, the sticks or anything. Wow. Um, there's also quite a few other, I believe, um, uh, Snake Eyes is a Zangief player. I believe he plays with uh, the pad as well, which is actually Zangief's moves are very complicated, require two circles. Of the D-pad, which is very easy to do with a stick. With a yeah. stick, with not so much yeah. yeah. He does. Uh, I think he does. But yeah, there are several players, especially in Super Mario Five, because um, of a new generation of people who yeah, didn't play the arcades. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Mm. Yeah. yeah, all the teenagers yeah. now played at home. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And like, like, those controllers are pretty expensive, right? Yep, the pads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I paid uh, two fifty for mine plus tax. Two fifty. Yeah. I said expensive. I was thinking much cheaper than that. No, oh, is it Mad Cats? What is it? Uh, Mad Cats. Mine was Mad Cats controller. Yeah, yeah oh, it is. Mad Cats made made the best five six. Unfortunately, yeah. they're, they're, they're out of business. They're out of business. Yeah, that's what it was the Guitar Hero thing. They made the yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're a rock band. I don't know what. Yeah. Okay. So Ultra Street Fighter Four, we find out pretty much right at the beginning of Ultra Street Fighter Four that Akuma is. And his his dragon rage attack is not all that it's cracked up to be, because uh, Bison's back. He's alive. He's he's alive. <laughs> not only is he alive, his soul is alive. Uh, but also Guken yeah. is, is still alive as well. Uh, Ryu and Ken's master. Yeah. Uh, not that anybody would care, but in like the O U in Japanese is always O. So go Ken. Oh, go Ken. Yeah, just like an extended O. Think of an O with a little line. Okay. Okay. Go-ken. Go-ken. It's about yeah. Ken. Uh, <laughs> a little bit longer next time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I must have been great for Ken, his pupil, when they were training, and someone said, go Ken's name. Yeah. Because then he's like, yeah, go me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing, I am doing a great job. Uh, maybe Ken. Ken means punch. Oh, in, does uh, it? In Japanese. Uh, it's a little Ryu, on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> Ryu means dragon. What's the rapper pet? Ryu dragon punch. Sure, Ryu Ken, uh, true dragon punch. Oh. oh. Uh, well, they're a little on the nose, yeah. Japan, but yeah. okay. To us, it sounds so mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I always assumed it meant it was Rusty Syringe in, 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 in <laughs> conjunction <laughs> Ryu Ken. And uh, Rusty, Rusty Syringe. Syringe. Yeah. Rusty Syringe attack. Which are you can. Because sometimes they put sounds at the beginning of words that we think would be at the end of words, but you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so cultured. Oh, cultured, yeah. yeah. That's me. The world traveler. Four Boys Cultural Podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the culture cast. We call it here. Uh, so Bison was considered out of the picture. There was a void in the whole Power Mad uh, final boss uh, district. You know what I mean? Like there was there was a, a power back in here. A vacancy. Yeah. yeah. So, that's mm-hmm. it. so Bison, it turns out, had a bunch of genetically engineered beings created for the sake of using them as pawns and potentially hosting their bodies. So we have a bunch of like uh, Bison freaks, a la uh, Sam. Uh, was it Ripley? What? 
Uh, on one of our podcasts, we talked about a bunch of clones and tubes who were being used for... Oh, that was the Space Pirates. They space were doing pirates. that just to see if they could make their own yeah. cells stronger, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, basically the same thing. Uh, he did this back in the Alpha days. This is when all this was happening. So when he was experimenting, experimenting on Ryu was when uh, he was creating all these clones as well, which we kind of knew. And I guess he's seeing if he can do better with the dudes this time. So one of the early experiments, Abel, was at some point freed by Charlie and lived on as a mercenary with amnesia. What's Abel look like? Just Abel is uh, French. He's a very large man, uh, blonde hair, okay. uh, from France. And uh, he, his fighting style is MMA. Okay. Yeah, he's so from a test tube. He lives, he lives in France. That doesn't change yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 Like, a person is just like... Yeah. Another, yeah, well, anyway, I don't want to say a person is a test tube, but, but like, like it doesn't matter how you're born, right? He knows where he was born. Okay. Could have okay. been Thailand. I'm, not, I'm not from Mexico. I am from the womb. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that hurts, right? We're all, yeah. we're all from the womb. The womb. I personally identified my skinny manila from the womb. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I've given up that life, that life in the womb. Uh, so another one of these uh, clones uh, becomes self-aware, calling him Seth. Yeah, calls himself Seth. Yeah. So Named uh, after Seth Killian, who is... Uh, Former uh, competitive player and current commentator. Oh, really? On fighting games. I didn't realize. Yeah. He went on to design a fighting game called Divekick, which I recommend. Oh my god. god. Look that up, game. guys. Yeah, look that up. Uh, and he's also the final boss of Divekick, yeah. Seth Killian himself. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Seth, Seth Killian, yeah. Uh, Seth Killian, the narcissist. Per- who make, who yeah. designs games and makes himself <laughs> the most powerful enemy. For someone who does not play any fighting games, Divekick, like, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit about it. Uh, Divekick is a two button fighting yeah. game. You have jump and kick, because uh, Divekicks <laughs> are the most abusable. A function in fighting games, it's, so... It's weird that you have jump and not dive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kick is the dive. Well, yeah. The kick's the dive. Okay, okay. Uh, each character uh, does it at a different angle, so like there's a lot of uh, fighting going on. You literally can't even move forward and back. You go forward by diving, jumping, and kicking. Oh, okay. Um, it is a, and if you cross, you like switch? If you hit... Yeah, exactly. You switch, someone jumps over you or whatever. Okay. Um, very simple fighting game, two-button fighting game, but it's all about fundamentals. Spacing fundamentals. Yeah. So you have people who don't necessarily have the execution that a seasoned fighting game player would have, but you has have the good, combos, yeah. a, a good thinking mind, a good, yeah, a good yeah. spatial awareness. And the reaction time, too. Exactly. They, they demolish. Yeah. So some fighting game players do all that, but usually, largely, you'll see people yeah. come in that don't fight. There's a great know. video on Nandy's YouTube, which he'll plug at some point. Yeah, it's a, oh, yeah. with me, me KOing my friend with a ridiculous dive kick as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so <laughs> Seth is in charge of a Shadowloo division. Uh, whenever he, I guess, becomes self-aware. And he kind of takes it off on his own. Uh, so he's the leader of his own kind of little crime syndicate. Mm-hmm. He's a, a bad guy, basically. But again, just like a different channel of bad guys. <laughs> he's also not human. He is a big blue man yeah. with a separating body, floating yin-yang in, in his stomach and everything. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds very, uncomfortable. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so so <laughs> Seth is the one who puts together the tournament in, in this game. Uh, he does it in the hopes of recording the abilities of all the best fighters, excuse me, especially Ryu, so he can copy their abilities and become powerful enough to rule the world. So it turns out he's a lot like his progenitor, his, his dada, mm-hmm. and he just wants to rule the world. I've never heard that word used for a uh, father. Progenitor. Dada? No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was about with father. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. My dad won't respond unless I call him progenitor. <laughs> he won't talk to me. Progenitor yeah. Paul you too. It's, cool. yeah. <laughs> it's uh. It's it's nice. Nice. Seth is um a character. That's, That's a good a one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Seth is a, a big blue monster clone man who um has many moves from many other Street Fighter characters. So okay. Guile, one of Guile's signature moves is projectile. It's called the Sonic Boom. Okay. So he just shoots this like a like rotating looks like a ball and chain almost an energy ball and chain. Okay. Seth has that. Oh, okay, um, but he's cool. just faster than Guile. He has like, a, an uppercut, Shoryuken. He has a, yeah, a lot so of he presumably made this tournament so that he could just, like, people would imprint on him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> which is essentially he wanted to get Ryu there. Now, let me say, yeah. at this point, up until Super Lore now, Ryu is the most overrated in the lore, most overrated character of all time. This yeah. is all based off of him being He Sagat. won that one fight. Yeah. He didn't beat Sagat. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's it. He cheated. <laughs> he cheap shot at him. So everyone wants a piece of Ryu. He's the most famous fighter in the world, including Seth, yeah. who probably would just be disappointed when he meets him. Yeah. Such a scumbag right now. Yeah. 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 Mind you, him and Sagat are friends at this point. Okay. So they're okay. They made that. Well, what? Really? Yeah, How does Sagat get over that? I love Sagat. He meets in Street Fighter 4 with him. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, throughout the course of the game, everyone pretty much ends up at Seth's headquarters, uh, and all the final battles go down. And now Bison just kind of re- 
turns and kills Seth, I guess? Uh, and then he releases the rest of his clone army, uh, these ones not self-aware, onto all the other fighters. Mm-hmm. So what does the, the end of this game look like? Uh, it's really hard, right? Street Fighter Five came out, and basically everyone was still alive. Yeah, from that game. Uh, so I'm assuming Bison wasn't defeated. I think Bison's ending is canon because Seth is no longer a thing. Okay. So yeah. he's probably the one who died. Yeah. Um. So uh, end of the game, Ryu meets um Bison. Uh, they and he also meets Ken. Uh, Ryu finally fights. Has a, they also sorry we didn't talk about the Street Fighter Alpha two. Ryu fought Ken. And lost because during the whole Alpha series, Ryu has been very confused, very uh, yeah, yeah. dejected by cheating as a guy. Yeah, yeah. Ken he, gives him his own bad. bandana. That's why Ryu, after Street Fighter 2, after Street Fighter Alpha, wears a red bandana. Red bandana. Ken's red bandana. It's Ken's bandana. Okay. Not the white bandana he wears in Alpha. Yeah. Um, that added clarity. So he always has that on to sort of like ground him. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so he meets Ken, fights Ken seriously, and he wins. Uh, fights Sagat. The winner is unknown, but they fight his friends. Okay. Right, they finally meet each other again. Sagat's a good guy again. They they are okay. Um, the stats we know Hado isn't really a thing anymore. It's a yeah. you know Ryu's starting to get a lot. He's gotten under under control. under control. Comes back again in the next version. We're gonna talk about that. Super okay. fun. Awesome. Um, which does have a canon story mode, so we'll be able to follow that. Yeah. There. And um, I guess Seth loses. Bison takes over again. Yeah. Uh, way. yeah. So Seth loses. Bison takes over. Everyone goes fights all his clones. Uh, as all this is going on, Akuma and Guken, uh, Ken and Ryu's uh-huh. master. They finally meet again and duel over Ryu's soul. That's it. So Goken, who died at the end of Street Fighter Mm One, turns out he wasn't dead. He was sleeping and being a bad dad, I guess. Yeah, that's it. I know, just not telling Ryu and Ken a lot. Instead of going to the store for cigarettes, he (laughs) I got soul pumps by (laughs) running my soul. Um, So the reason why he survived this was a mysterious power in the Street Fighter universe, um, basically the opposite. Oh, yeah. Of the Dark Hado called the power of nothingness. Yeah. So before you get the raging demon on you, which destroys your soul, you empty your soul. Yeah. Essentially, your eyes turn white, your soul gets empty, and you can survive it. Okay. So Ryu eventually uses this. He starts to develop it that in this game. Okay. The power of nothingness. Okay. Which Goken has mastered. So now he's Akuma's equal. And does he have this ability in Street Fighter 3? Uh, Street Fighter 3 being after Street Fighter 5, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Power of nothingness, though, like in like Buddha, uh, like Buddhism and stuff, like mm-hmm. they. That's something that they want that's to it. achieve, that's right? Okay. Like, so whereas this, is, whereas the opposite is literally that want that, like, because the 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 dark hado is wanting something too bad that you let it corrupt mm-hmm. you. Okay, so, oh, that's I never thought of it that way. But yeah. yeah. In the non-canon Street Fighter Four pack-in movie, okay. the anime, uh, Ryu ends up killing Seth with the power of nothingness. Seth annihilates him. Ryu couldn't even touch him. And then ends up power nothingness, eyes turn white, one I mean, punch. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, just like in flow state. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That so, makes that makes a great movie. Honestly, yeah. Goken's yeah. ending in Super Fighter Four. Uh, Ryu is defeated by, or Akuma's ending. I don't remember. Ryu is defeated by Akuma. Ryu's lying on the ground. Akuma, uh, Goken's about to help him up, and then Akuma and him have a competition. They fight. Yeah. Okay. The winner gets the pup. Uh, yeah, that's Akuma's it. Words, so. Well, uh, can canonically, uh, Goken helps fight off, or, or does fight off Akuma, okay. and helps Ryu conquer his inner darkness. Lovely. So that's, I guess, how he, he gets that, that yeah. power of nothingness for the, the future games. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, at some point, uh, Elena convinces Akuma to take a selfie with her, which, <laughs> which you think would be difficult to do. Uh, Elena right. being a Brazilian capoeira yeah. fighter. No, I'm from, from Africa, actually. But capoeira, use a Brazilian, right. Brazilian capoeira. Fighting, yeah. um, very skimpy clothes on that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> it, it seems like most games out of Japan, though. Like I know in in, in the Metal Gear game, uh, I think the most recent one, uh, Quiet of Pain. Yeah, yeah. Quiet. Yeah. yeah, that while well, while you're in the helicopter, if you stare at the girl's boobs, it gives you game, attributes game for a certain yeah. Game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she ends up like showing off her boobs and her butt to you, just not playing around. You just leave her alone. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you're uh, rewarded for although, that. Although honestly, for a lot of misguided youth, that's a good message. Just leave the girl alone. <laughs> just just leave her alone, <laughs> and man. Good things will happen. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Look from afar. Never touch. Uh, <laughs> Street Fighter 4 being largely the most uneventful Street Fighter. Um, and again, it was like, it feels like a lot of retconning, and it feels like it worked really well. Because, like, like you say, Street Fighter 3, now Ryu had this power of nothingness, and from 2 to 3, there was no explanation. Yeah, so, yeah. With, with 4, they're like, this is how we got it, you know what I mean? 4 like, and largely 5. That's it. The it, yeah. uh, it, seems, it really feels like they're building the floor that they're standing on, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, yeah, so so the next in the next in the series would be Street Fighter Five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I consider this one to be an eventful story in Street Fighter. Um, it's also the only Street Fighter game that has a dedicated story mode, a la Mortal Kombat or Tekken. Um, 
there's no arcade mode. So uh, there is. Basically, if you run through each character's individual story, mm -hmm. it takes place over the course of three chapters. You can be each one in five minutes. Okay. And it sets a table for the big story mode that was patched into the game later. Okay. Um, cool. Which is a big cinematic story mode. Okay, cool. So uh, this is a game that does bring back uh, a canonically dead character, Charlie Nash. Charlie uh, Nash. <laughs> Zombie Charlie. Yeah, he wakes <laughs> up in a tomb and is instructed by a woman named Helen to retrieve an item from his old friend Guile. So uh, he basically has to go fight Guile, get an item to beat Bison, is what the woman in Helen tells him. Mm -hmm. um, also a dick. Charlie's a dick in this, in this game. He has half of his face is metal. Um, he's was rebuilt. He has a metal arm. Uh, okay. He's like not the same person at all, and he's very angry. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Because like, he's sent to fight literally his best friend, like, and he's just like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. He'll do whatever it takes, you know? Um, meanwhile, Shadowloo's uh, organization initiates... The Shadowloo organization initiates Operation Chains by launching uh, a bunch of satellites in orbit. Uh, they plan to spread fear and pain. They're, they're just... Uh, fear, fear and pain are the sources of vice and psycho power. Um, they're, pl they're just planning on taking over the world, mm -hmm. again, basically. Uh, a bunch of characters... Do a bunch of other stuff. Rashid infiltrates some stuff, and mm. there's a lot of things going on. Rashid being, um, I don't know exactly what country he's from, some Middle East, uh, mm -hmm. wears a turban, <laughs> um, fights with the power of technology. So he has like a, he's got like a jetpack, and he's got like a wind machine, and he's got okay. like really cool stuff. He's, he's Iron Man. Like one of the only non stereotypical characters in the game. Okay. There you go. They could have went really easy. Well, the Middle East is known for the technology. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. My bad. <laughs> some person. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, unsuccessful in attempting to stop Bison and his subordinates in New York, Guile and Chun-Li are attacked by Charlie, the guy who we thought would have been a good guy. You'd think he'd be a good guy, but it turns out he's a bad guy. It's not, Charlie, not, hey, it's guy. not himself yeah. anymore. Yeah. So he attempts uh, to take the pieces that, that Guile has. Charlie then reunites with Helen, who convinces Rashid, who you just mentioned, uh, and another character to form an alliance with them to retrieve the pieces. So, uh, th this game does, from me reading the synopsis, it does seem to be trying to recapture, or just trying to capture these pieces. Mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and... Sure, yeah. It, it, like, I mean, this whole part is just setting the table for what would happen. Yeah. Um, the big baddie in this game, there are two characters. Uh, Bison, of course. Uh, this is, will also be Bison's last game. Yeah. Uh, he's at Super Mario 3, which cannot be taken place after 5. He's, no, he's, he's not, not there right now. Um, and um, it's funny, I don't remember his name right now. Uh, I don't know the guy who plays it. Hi, Tiny. He plays Nikali. Nikali. That's it. Nikali. Yeah, that's that Yeah. He's basically an asset god. So those are two main antagonists in the game. Nikali, mm -hmm. who also can't speak. Yeah. He's so, a big monster. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Helen's working for Nikali? Helen is working for the boss of Street Fighter 3, Gil, who we'll get into later. Okay. Who's the, in charge of the Illuminati. Yes. That's uh, the, the Gil big... and Guile. What did they do yeah, there? Yeah, right? <laughs> Gil, who uh, is uh, very, he's a very strange character. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's, yeah, he's work, she's working essentially for uh, Gil, which yeah. only, is only revealed at the end of the game in the credits. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Helen revealed to be Colin as well. I believe Colin's a bad name. Or Colleen. Colleen? But like, if you read the katakana, it spells out that way. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Colin, very, I was like, why would they name a character Colin? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love all those Twitter things of uh, the girls saying like, oh, the one, he leaves the smell of his colon <laughs> on yeah. your yeah. pillow. Yeah, yeah. Smell of cologne wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So now, uh, Ryu returns from his, from his training, <laughs> and he defeats the Kali. Yeah. The Aztec now, God. this was a very, very important moment based yeah. off of what the power of nothing is, basically. Yeah. So, uh, Ryu has three, four major fights in this in this game. He fights Ken, loses the fight against Ken. He's distracted. The Dark Hado is starting to come back up in him. Okay. Uh, his first fight with Nikali, Nikali was winning. The Dark Hado starts to come back. But at this point, Ryu has trained so much against it that it makes him weaker. Okay. Yeah. Dalsim ended up saving him from Nikali first. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, a, in a fight in India. Nikali teleported away or turned into goo and went somewhere else. <laughs> naturally. Uh, naturally. As, <laughs> As you do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I'm boarding class, I turned to goo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, Ryu then fights, uh, after Nikali fights Ken, who's the fight against Ken. Ken says he's distracted. Then he needs to start, stop his Dark Hado nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, then Ryu goes off to train on his own and really masters the power of nothingness. Then, like in true Ryu fashion, has another fight with Nikali. Kills him in one punch. Nikali just basically turns back into goo and dies. Okay. Just like the movie. And you said Nikali's a monster, but like if I was looking at Nikali... He's an Aztec god. Yeah, an Aztec god, right? Yeah, the monster Aztec god. So what does he look like? We're going to talk about Nikali a is god, a monster. <laughs> it's all the same. What a tall, muscular, shirtless, wearing you know Aztec armor uh, below his waist. Okay. Um, has very long red dreadlocks. Okay. Which when he enters his V trigger, which is a power up mode in a mechanic in Super Mario 5, his hair goes up like a Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan. Oh, okay. Um, very, very cool looking character, very feral fighting style. Um, uses that on Ryu to a good effect. Yeah. Okay. Basically, Nikali is able to beat anybody in the story mode, aside from Ryu, after he 
Beast of Power, uh, Master of Power, Nothing Is, and Bison, who he fights at the end, and they fight to a standstill. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So, um, while this is happening, Ryu, Ryu fights him. Uh, Rashid manages to power down all the satellites using his technology, like you said. Charlie, or Zombie Charlie, then confronts Bison, the man who killed him initially. Uh, doesn't manage to beat him. Uh, sacrifices himself instead to drain part of Bison's psycho power, weakening it enough for Ryu, our, our white cis male yeah. antagonist, <laughs> to come in and save the day. <laughs> yeah, so that, that fight uh, pretty much establishes, because uh, Bison is, at this point, almost a god, right? Yeah. Like, Charlie did weaken him, but at this point he is able to annihilate Guile, um, any other characters um, who have, on their own uh, merit, been world famous. Yeah. Ryu being a sham god, um, yeah. of course, you know, uh, in this game, finally establishes himself as, um, you know, a real contender. He beat Bison. He was yeah. the only one who did it. Yeah. Power nothing less. Did, did you do any research coming oh. here? Oh, this is amazing. But, <laughs> yeah, this is also in my mind, like, a, <laughs> yeah. by being the most recent. I haven't yeah. for too many years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, the, the last, last 30 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> completely sets the table, uh, k- kills, kills Bison. Bison is dead. Yeah. Um, that's the end of him. Um, he ends up beating Bison convincingly too. It wasn't even out of breath. Um, it was really cool. The Street Fighter Five ends with Ryu and Ken meeting again, having one last sparring match, which you play, and then at the end of it, you see Ken go flying, right? And like just like it completely gets annihilated by Ryu, and that's why their difference is established. Okay. Um, okay. Like you know, Ken being martial arts champion won many um, you know American championships, but Ryu actually being now um, like established as the world's strongest fighter. Yeah, and a wizard. And a wizard. Finally, it took it took, it took seven <laughs> games. Yeah. But he's finally established as a wizard and the world's best fighter. Yeah. Um, the brainwashed clones uh, recover their senses. Uh, Rashid re- receives a pre-recorded message from his now deceased friend, um, who was killed by Fung, uh, thanking him for helping save the world and telling him to move on with his life. <laughs> Which is like great. You know? you imagine you have a friend who dies and you like dedicate your time to avenging him, and just when you do, you find a message from him that's like great job. I knew you would do it. <laughs> Go on, move on with your life. <laughs> like, I need that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> move on with your life. Such a great that's phrase. It. Yeah. Um, Imagine he just got beaten up and he was like badly injured, yeah. like ICU, and he gets this message. I knew you would do it. Move on with your life. Once we're done recording here, we're all going to record that message. And on our desk, it's going to be sent to our loved ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, we didn't talk about her, but uh, the character Kenny, are you guys aware of what yeah. she looks like? Uh, no. Yeah. Very. Uh, she's got a tiny little, scar tiny little scar that she's very self conscious about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Oh. Uh, she is uh, British, um, from Britain, that British accent. Yeah. Um, she is short, blonde, ponytail, um, commando. Commando. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wears, like, like a, she wears a green tank top. Yeah. Commando. Okay. Very, like, very muscular. Um, Bison's clones, which you mentioned, are all based off of Kenny. Mm-hmm. They oh. all look exactly like her, and they wear like a black leotard. It's uh, great that you said that. She, hey. was, she was introduced in Street Fighter 2. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she was not in the, or, the original. So when I went through the endings with you, I didn't go through hers. Um, but her ending, she actually meets her and Bison. Or she beats Bison. Uh, and then he's defeated. And he says, uh, don't you remember me? Bison is the one who gave her the scar on her face. Mm-hmm. And she, Bison oh. says, don't you remember me? And she says, no, like, who are you? Why would you do this to me? And he says, we were in love once. And then she kind of has this memory of her and Bison serving on the same special forces, like, task squad. Okay. And, um, yeah, she basically, she has this moment where she's remembering it, and you see Bison, like, in the same commando outfit that she's wearing. And uh, she basically says, the old, the memory version of herself says, no, no, you could never love this loser. He's a loser. Like, just forget about him kind of thing. Oh, so then yeah. her ending is her, like, feeding a cat in an alley. Yeah, she's, she's, she likes cats. It's yeah. One of her, one of her interests. In oh, stuff. yeah. Because oh, okay. <laughs> her, her ending in, in uh, Street Fighter 2, uh, the last the last scene is her feeding a cat in an alley. And just yeah. before that, it says, like, oh, you don't need him. Everybody will know now that he's going to be beaten by you. So for thing. someone who's not interested in scars, her life decisions... Cats. Cats, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cats, she likes fighting. Cats and she fighting. Like, yeah, it's it's awesome. uh, she is much like Chun-Li. She's a quintessential hunting bag. Yeah. Um, new character comes in, easily beats Kami. Uh, canonically, she's not very strong at all. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. So right at the end of the game, that's when we meet Gil, Helen's master. Um, and Helen's re- revealed to be Colleen. Do you, either, do you either know what Gil looks like? No. I do know, I know Guile looks like, not Gil. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Gil, Gil is a... Uh, much like Seth, he's kind of like a monster. He's like divided in half. Okay. Half okay. of him is red, half of him is blue, with long blonde hair, and wears like almost a diaper. Like it looks like. Oh yeah. He literally <laughs> has like. Right. Uh, it's like I'm a being of all power, but I poopy in my pants sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's uh, all that power, you know. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. it. Oh, I have a very strong colon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Colleen. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> pronounced Colleen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Gil is uh, Illuminati boss. We're going to do Street Fighter 3. Yeah, cool. Well, here we are. Street Fighter 3. Let's Street talk about Fighter the Illuminati. 3. So, before we get into the plot, Street Fighter 3 is my least favorite Street Fighter. It's okay. also the most technical Street Fighter. I do like technical fighters, so I'm surprised I didn't like this that much. Um, it's It was an, it's originally created not as a Street Fighter game at all. Oh, really? So the beta build for the game doesn't even have Ryu and Ken in it. It introduces the most new characters, like all the characters aside from Ryu and Ken and okay. Kuma and Chun Li. Uh, most of them are very new characters that didn't appear in any other game. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, the music was different, didn't have any of the iconic stages really. Um, but they added Ryu and Ken in at the last minute, and it became a different game. The fighting system is similar, but not the same at all. No. Okay. Um, similar, but completely different. Yeah, like it's really, <laughs> they introduced a parry system that wasn't in any other game, which was Evo 1 with 37. Okay. The parry yeah, system, Dago yeah. Parry and all those. Um, but yeah. was it a bad parry system? It's a very good parry system. Yeah, that's um, I But I just, I, I don't feel like it's a Street Fighter game. Okay. Um, just partly because they didn't set the table with Street Fighter 4 and 5 when it came out. So you're just like, why is Ryu doing no, this? No, that's fair. That, yeah. that is completely fair. It's yeah. just, it's so funny that um, it was it was right after Street Fighter 3 that people started complaining about uh, the difficulty gap or the learning curve because they started introducing like frame buffering yep. on counters and stuff like that. But it's like, obviously, Street Fighter 3, they still had the single frame buffer. And it's like, as soon as they changed... Uh, people were complaining about Street Fighter Three, yep. but because like the story wise, yeah, they like those the last thirty minutes that we talked, none of that happened. None Whenever this this game right, came no, out, so no. you're coming from Street Fighter Two, which you don't even know who won Street Fighter Two. Yeah. Then to Street Fighter Three, where's Bison? Where's Guile? What happened to everybody? Yeah. What happened to Charlie? What happened to everybody? You don't even know what's going on at all. I mean, Bison is the one I will say. Okay, sure, you could have said sure. they everybody oh, killed okay, him. Man. Everybody yeah. killed him at the end of Street Fighter Two. You know what I mean? Right. But like all the other ones, like like you say, Ryu, just like oh no, the the dark side. That's just the thing of the past. Like I don't see that anymore. You're also older. You're also introducing yeah. the power of nothingness, which mm-hmm. like is just taken for granted there. That's um, it. Yeah. And you're also like he also has many many moves that just don't make any sense at all. Like yeah. his electric shocking Hadouken. Which comes from Goken after he comes back. Yeah, Street, not right? not from the dark so, side. It was a very strange game. Yeah, they came out. And 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 yeah, like Bison, Bison can be explained. Mike Bison can be explained. But like Shadow Lou is completely gone. So right. it's like literally just like the entire yeah. criminal organization that he built up is just completely gone. And you're just like, okay, well. That's it. So I went back to my comfort food after that game came out and played the Alpha games again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I knew. Uh, but now, of course, the Street Fighter Five leading right into three. Yeah, uh, makes a lot more sense. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Okay. So like like we I feel like the theme of this has been like they didn't tell a good story but they did a damn good job <laughs> retconning it. <laughs> like, yeah. They've been patching holes since day one. Uh, um, so yeah, the big bad uh, is the Illuminati. Which for anyone who listens to the Lord Boys podcast, I, this is must be at least the third episode that we've done on the Illuminati. <laughs> I think uh, both, yeah, third or fourth for sure. So um, yeah, the the guys who show up in all the crackpot YouTube comments. Um, are the ones in charge of the world. And it's run by Gil, the half blue, half red man, uh, self a powerful self-proclaimed religious figure. Hmm. So anytime you're a self-proclaimed religious figure, you're Charles Manson. I mean, yeah, that's it. Like, it's a cult. A lot, got his, a, cult. Yeah. And a lot of his moves are related to that kind of stuff as well. Like, if he has a full stock super bar and you kill him, you think the battle's over? He shouts out, resurrection, gets up, and his super bar drains into his health bar. Oh, yeah? You hear that multiple times as well. So you really got to make sure you That's get him before useful. he comes yeah. Wow. And he comes up with his angel wings and everything. Like so can you just, like, if you're playing... Right, can you play Gil? Uh, in the console version, yeah. Okay, so if you're playing Gil, can you just, like, charge your super and never use Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Just talk to your character. But the thing is, like, if... When is the health to ours coming back, you can hit him. So if you just hit him, uh, you can do it before it fully charges up. Okay. It could be at maybe like a quarter health. You okay. can finish him off quick before yeah. he gets super But it's still, still though. Yeah. And it's hard to charge your super when you're at a quarter health. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah. I could imagine like a lot of, I could imagine at lower tiers, like if I was just playing with, with Jamie, let's say, yeah. and one of us was playing Gil, I feel like I could stall long enough just yeah. to charge that super. I'm Jamie here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, he's I'm also, uh, Gil is banned in tournaments. He's not Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, has he always been banned in yep. tournaments? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he only came out with. So Street Fighter. Let's talk about iterations. Uh, I have written down Street Fighter Three is second impact or third impact. Uh, s- uh, s- d- second impact. Or second impact. impact right. Yeah. Okay. So there's no ultra. There's no turbo. Mm-hmm. Is this this is not the last one? Is Correct. What it means? Yeah. There's two versions of Street Fighter Three. Okay. As I said, for Street Fighter uh, Three was meant not to be a Street Fighter game. It was a game they just basically. You ever guys you ever play, you ever play uh, Mario Two? 
Yes. Yep. That was not meant to be Mario games. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. In, in much in the same way that this was not meant to be Street Fighter games. It was supposed to be another Capcom fighter mm. that they retrofitted Street Fighter into because they wanted to sell it. Okay. Um, so that's a, that's a great analogy because now I'm thinking about Mario too. Which was, yeah, you got so Peach you can glide around. Yeah. And right. stuff. Well, you have the four yeah. characters and each yeah. of them have their different strengths. Yeah. Characters. So your, your listeners who are more familiar with the series than I am maybe can correct me on this, but I believe Ryu and Ken were the only double in, Street Fighter characters in Double Impact. Oh, then, okay. when they saw the success of the game, they decided to insert more Street Fighter characters in it, saying, hey, it's real Street Oh, Street. so now they just made it a Street Fighter game. Yeah, That's so Chun Li made it into their. Um, and called it Second Impact. And then the that was th- it. Third Strike was oh, the third last strike. edition of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, so That's terrible. The okay. story revolved around a character named Alex, who yeah. was technically the first MMA fighter. Uh, story wise, not. Uh, Abel was the first one. Yeah. But. Uh, he was the first one. He's like, he's so close to being Gil. Like his oh, story, yeah. it's Absolutely. like he had a friend who was hospitalized <laughs> by the big bad guy, Gil. And now he's like out for revenge. And he's yeah. like, well, why not just make a guy, guys? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So he yeah. ends up uh, fighting against Gil at the end, I believe? Uh, yes, I believe. Yeah, fights against Gil. Uh, Gil throws the fight because yeah. he sends stronger fighters there. Canonically, mm-hmm. Alex is not very strong at all. He's American, he's from New York. Uh, fought Ken in a tournament, lost against Ken. Yeah. Uh, Third Strike actually has different story elements. They don't just replace it. They actually continue the story from oh, there. So in oh, Third awesome. Strike, um, although Alex won the tournament and beat Gil, thinking he's the strongest guy in the world, accidentally runs into Ryu, strongly okay. fighter, has a fight against him. Ryu beats him in 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that's when Alex sort of realizes he's not strong. Yeah, hey, bro, you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> what's so. the, sorry, what's Ryu's motivations to be a traveling fighter? Like, he just wants to prove he's the best? Yeah. Okay. He, he wants he, he finds the thrill of battle in fights and finds communication best done through your fists. He's okay. got he's got to get Charlie badges, badges to get to the final four. That's it. <laughs> he was also a very very nice man. Okay. Uh, yeah. He he goes out of his way to be nice to people. Well, because he's constantly fighting with that side of him, right? That's like yeah. be bad guy, be bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. But so now this, now he's at that point where he's yeah. like he is completely at one with the universe. So Danny, not to say too much about your personal life, but I know that you were uh, a wrestler in yep. your younger years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and. I also noticed that you go out of your way to be kind to most people <laughs> around you. Are you just like real life Ryu? So, spoilers, my real name is Ryu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is why I came on here. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we, we present to you exclusive <laughs> Lord Boy interview with Ryu. Yeah. You know, Street Fighter series. As you must say. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I know, you know, it's you, you people who. This is my theory. Yes. And uh, I don't fight anymore. I haven't fought in 10 years. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when, when you do, when you. People have aggression. People get upset at work. They get upset at yeah. their personal or whatever. Going to the gym is a major way of getting that out. Yeah. Fighting people is a major way of getting that it out. It would be. So when you spend your whole time doing that, or so much of your time getting aggression out that way, you don't you don't have any aggression left to take yeah. out of Ryu. Yeah. So you try to be like that. Which is what my thought about Ryu is. Ryu is just okay. such a, in the story, he's a great person. Yeah. I would think I just that say- you would just not realize that there's other channels to get your edge <laughs> yeah. out. And I, you would I, fight I, more. <laughs> as a psychology major, um, the, 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 the. But anyways, the, like, the, yeah. the, the. no, but, uh, the catharsis, like people uh, who are, are generally angry and they go and they take this all out in a punching bag, it is um, a very short release. Okay. Like they'll be less angry, but, but that's maybe, for every the, damn maybe day. for the rest of the day. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is something you have to do very often. Mm-hmm. It's not long lasting. Okay. Right? So, I just, I, like, I just oh. crank one out. And run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryu, we didn't really get into Ryu's uh, childhood or whatever, but Ryu also doesn't have a mother and a father. He's yeah. dropped oh. off at Goken's doorstep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so Ryu was raised by the fight master. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. all he knows is fighting. Okay. okay. And, and maybe Goken was ready. Goken? Sorry. Goken. Not, yeah. not Goken. But Goken was not ready for a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he gets dropped off at his door, and all he knows is fight. That's it. So sure. his do do? fondest memories are like running to the well, catching water, yeah. um, training with Ken as a child, both um, we'll doing the same thing, and like just fighting in general. Um, those are fond memories for Yeah. Okay. So he knows, like, he communicates with people through their fists. Okay. Ken and him had a language barrier when they first met. And that's yeah. how they basically got to know each other, as Ken learned Japanese. So Ken, yeah, so Ken's bilingual, but he learned from Ryu. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gil, uh, the leader of the Illuminati, uh, is not as outright evil as Bison, it seems. Uh, but, like, he, he doesn't seem to be like, I'm going to be overtly the ruler of the world, but obviously... If you know the Illuminati, they're, they rule the world, but from the shadows. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, he also has a brother named Urien, yep. uh, who is the very... Professor? Often mispronounced Urin. Which Urin? Is <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. He's Pee Boy. <laughs> yeah. Pee Boy is bad. Yeah. Urin to this day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Urien looks almost exactly like Gil before he went for the transformation through getting the half body, half red half. Oh, I was going to yeah. guess like his red half was on the other yeah. side or something. <laughs> his <laughs> red half is on the side of his heart and that's what makes him evil. Yeah. And <laughs> also wears a diaper. Um, 
I think they're from South America, both of them. Okay. Uh, very dark skin, white hair. Um, they're both businessmen. Uh, large, very tall, strong, ripped uh, guys. Okay. So uh, Gil uh, holds another World Warrior tournament for the sake of checking out fighter's potential. Like the same thing as Seth, it seems like. Same thing as Bison, it seems like. Just want to see who's strongest and learn from them. Uh, the main hero is Alex, like you said earlier, who was basically Guile in his backstory. Uh, Gil just plain, plain beats him up, like you said. But Alex is a hothead, goes on a mission for vengeance, ends up defeating Gil, which not only gets Gil interested in what Alex has to offer, but Alex starts to understand why certain people travel the world to fight strong opponents. And during all of this, Ken is enjoying fatherhood, like you said earlier, uh, while training his own student, Sean. Sean. Sean is most likely the worst fighter in Street Fighter Canon, it says here. Which yeah. makes me surprised. I would have thought Dan Hibiki. I would make the argument that Dan Hibiki is the worst. Although Sean is very much a caricature like that as well. Yeah, because it, it, uh, it says here, this is just a copy-paste paragraph. Sure. But it says, as Sean is most likely the worst fighter in Street Fighter Canon, making Dan Hibiki look unstoppable. Mm. So it's quite the claim. It, it could be. Sean's very young. compared to he's, he's not even 18 years old yet. Oh, okay. Um, so he has also, time. To, he has exactly, time to yeah. Yeah. There's a character in Street Fighter Five called Laura. She is okay. a, sort of a grappler character yeah. from Brazil. This is Laura's younger brother. So they actually, although Sean existed first, Laura, okay. Sean in Street Fighter V was much younger. He's a little boy. Uh, he's also in the game. Um, he's kind of cool. Like, if, if you think, if you ever heard the term Shoto clones, all that means, uh, on Tatsu Ken is their fighting style. In the U.S., they're called, it's called Shotokan, which is a variety of karate. Okay. So all characters who fight like Ryu, who look like him, where they be, they're called Shoto clones. Okay. So there's Ryu, Ken, Akuma, uh, Dan, okay. and Sean. Job. Who's the fifth, the well, fifth and le- most recent uh, Shoto clone? Okay, okay. Um, very much the same as like quarter circle back, quarter circle forward type moves. Uh, yeah. So largely the same sprites. Sean just has, worse. Uh, yeah, just objectively worse. Sean <laughs> has cornrows. He's a really cool looking character. Uh, has kind of grappling moves as well. Yeah. Um, my brother's favorite character as well. Kind of, kind of neat character as well. I, I like Sean. I don't think he's as bad as that. And also fighting wise in the game, he's much better than Dan. He's a mid tier character. Oh yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, canonically. Yeah, he might be worse. Could be, yeah. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, just a fun little trivia point. Uh, Ryu comes across an elderly hermit named Oro, Oro, who feels that after another few decades of solid training, Ryu might be man enough to face him in full Yeah, time. Oro is the goofiest looking character yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll ever see in your life. I, I haven't seen him, but just oh, reading man. his description like like that, I was like, he's going to be some like pervy sage Naruto. Yeah, kind of I think more like yeah. Yoda. Oh, yeah. It's like very short. Yeah. Whereas, like, tattered robes is a very dirty character. Yeah. Bald except for two little hairs sticking out. Yeah. Long nose, orange skin, or yellow skin. Okay. Um, also has one, character. basically, <laughs> yeah. Has one, it's it's like a very high pitched, raspy voice. Yeah. Has one t- hand tied behind his back for, as a concession to his opponents. Because he is yeah. the strongest Street Fighter character ever made. Yeah. Wow. Um, Clearly. He <laughs> is a complete beast. Is yeah. able to lift up, like, a, maybe like a 20 ton rock with a finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is an absolute monster in fighting. Like when yeah. he, uh, when he, even Akuma, that Akuma is scared of him. Yeah, yeah. no, so, he, uh, he's very obviously a sage. Yeah. Um, there's obviously a lot of speculation around him, and I feel Street Fighter Three uh, ends pretty open ended. Mm-hmm. Do you think Street Fighter Six will come after Three? Yes. That seems the most obvious. Right? And they haven't left themselves a bunch of room. Be- in between. Because Gil was at the end of Street Fighter V, going yeah. into three, there's like literally months. So yeah. there's no nothing for them to do. Okay. Uh, firmly believe that it will take place later. Firmly believe that Ryu will be much older. Maybe gray haired. Oh yeah. As well. I think they're actually gonna have a nice time skip. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh something to look forward to. It's okay. But you say very much older, so is Oro still there? Uh could be. I mean, if you look at the endings, Ryu's ending of Street Fighter Three was him lifting up that twenty ton rock with both hands. With both so hands. With Oro sitting on top. So okay. he's beginning his training to become, uh, okay. to ascend humanity and yeah, become yeah. like much, much stronger. Become an Oro. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if Ryu, the next game, had one hand tied behind That'd be neat. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when I when I first saw Oro in the arcade, I was like, what is what? this character? I'm reading <laughs> yeah. about him. He's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. How would very you much feel? the Sage character from a lot of yeah. anime. How would you feel about your character that you play the most having one hand tied behind his back in the next game? I, I'm a big fan of reinvention. Okay. So Ryu's been the same forever. Uh, it will be kind of jarring to not have him be the same. Yeah, because he's like the the one character that yeah. a change is going to be felt more than anything. That's it. Right? So for those of you who don't know, Super Fighter 5 is the most recent, not canonically, but uh, came out in 2015? Uh, 2016? 15, sorry? Yeah, 15. 16. We said 16 at the beginning. So yeah. Yeah. It is 16, yeah, last year. Yeah. Um, and Ken has always been a palette swap over you, so they played exactly the same as Street Fighter 2, uh, Street Fighter 1. The same in Street Fighter 2 minus some modifiers. So yeah. Ken had his... Hurricane kick hit him multiple times, didn't knock down, Ryu just did. 
Okay. We, uh, Ken had a fire uppercut, but you didn't. Okay. Um, Street Fighter 3, the difference is it started to become more pronounced. Their normal moves, their punches and kicks looked a little bit different. Ken's stance was a lot more bouncy. Yeah. Instead of being as the faster, more stylish fighter. Yeah. Super 5, the doors open. Like they fight yeah, yeah. completely differently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ken has more like a Jeet Kundo stance kind of thing, like bouncing back and forth. How about Street Fighter 3, though? Super 3, they're still the same. Okay. They're, like they're, they're, they're almost yeah. positive. Except so, so Ken looks like, yeah. a little faster. That's one of those things that, like, they've done a great job with retconning, but obviously they. Yeah. They jumped yeah. the shark on that one, you know. Ken, Ken and Ryu in Super 3 had the same moves, yeah. different properties, and different super moves entirely. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Ken now has different moves. Like his hurricane kick goes in an arc. Yeah. Um, he has completely different stance, completely different fighting style. Oh. It's it's really cool. That's the point. They're they're, they're their own unique characters. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's Street Fighter. So be honest. Do you recommend someone who is not a huge fighting game uh, player to get in now to Street Fighter Five? I will say that I think everybody should be a big fighting game player, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> and that uh, Street Fighter V is good training wheels to getting onto uh, more complicated Street Fighter V mechanics, as well as other more complicated fighting games. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very forgiving. It has a lot of flashy moves. I think mm -hmm. two players can play against each other, not knowing what they're doing, and have a good time. Which yeah. is what Street Fighter Two, uh, Street Fighter Two set the world on fire as a result of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, a fighting game had never been made. Uh, fighting games owe oh, Street Fighter 2 and to an extent Street Fighter 4 on locks. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know, remember the early 2000s Street Fighter uh, fighting games in general were just not popular. They were in the ghetto. Street Fighter 4 brought them back. Oh, yeah. Now we have Injustice. We have more combat. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of. I mean, uh, it also helps that games, the game industry in general is, yeah. is more popular than ever by a large yeah. margin right now. And it's just blown up, honestly. You say it's accessible too, but I've seen people who think they're good come into the office and we'll throw it in and see how, how it goes. And you will. Take it easy on them and stomp their face. I will say that if you if you're playing like with most genres, I, I don't play MOBAs and I've I've had the same experience with MOBAs. Yeah. Find play the game, find someone who's a beginner like you and develop it together. Yeah. Uh, that's the best thing that you guys can do. Uh, I think everybody should be into fighting games. I think fighting games are the most pure, uh, yeah. fair games. Out I, there. I will I will give you that point. As someone who does not have a lot of experience with fighting games, pure it seems to be the right word yeah, when describing it. fighting games. And uh, like Street Fighter, Street Fighter is. Like one, like to me, it's up there with Mario. It's up there with Halo. It's up there with uh, other trend-setting games, Half-Life. Uh, as a genre maker, as a genre popularizer, um, Street Fighter Two specifically, uh, you like everybody owes themselves to at least play that version, uh, okay. as because it's a good piece of game history. I think. Awesome. Anambi. Yes. You have a YouTube channel. Correct. Right? Yeah. Um, although I don't really upload much anymore, um, I'm definitely open to doing it in the future. Um, just search NAMZ, N-N-A-M-Z, on YouTube. You should run into my channel. I mostly cover portables, um, you know, really nerdy games and stuff like that. <laughs> so you're, 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 really you're nerdy consoles, podcast. it's uh, PS3 and 4, um, PS3 and Nintendo, 4, 3DS. Uh, 3DS, Vita, and most recently PlayStation VR, which I yeah. am attempting to get through Resident Evil. I'm a big <laughs> scary cat, so... He uh, sold me on the idea. Anything I've said about PSVR to this point, it's been basically <laughs> from Mandy's yeah, yeah, That's it. Yeah. At one point, I'm going to lend you guys that. You could do a Lord Boys PSVR for <laughs> some game. We'll see. Final, Final Fantasy Fishing. So, <laughs> James, if we're looking for you on the internet, where where might we find uh, you? You can find me on Facebook at James Miller. Reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Add me up. Ask me all your crazy questions. And also on Twitter at J-A-Y-M-I-L-L-K. That's J-Milk with two L's. Uh, as Ethan. always, you can find me at Ethan the Dead Man on Twitter and Instagram. You can find Lore Boys on Twitter at Lore Boys, uh, Instagram at Lore Boys Podcast. Um, email us Lore Boys Podcast at gmail uh, We're all over the place. Uh, this week, uh, there was pretty exciting news in Mexico recently. Uh, it snowed for the first time in I think the last twelve years. It was. Uh, we got some of that snow. We have it in the in the freezer right now. The next person, the, the very next person to subscribe to Lore Boys Premium, you will get this Mexican snow delivered to the mail in you. So please wow. hit up that hit up that good old Lore Boys yeah. Premium subscription. Uh, remember to hit like, subscribe, leave us a review on iTunes. We really appreciate it, guys. And until next day, next time, Lore Boys out. out. <laughs>
<laughs> like yeah, running no. down the place. <laughs> okay. Let's go, let's go. Boys Day Rude. 